world where equality is just another euphemism for mediocrity, where participation is more highly valued than achievement, where just enough to get by is the new standard of excellence. There is a small minority of people who fight back against such apathy, who struggle daily to reach new heights. These brave few are the hope for the future, the bright shining light for the next generation. They are the ones who will lead us to the places we have never dreamed of, to the undiscovered country, to reach goals only a few can even begin to imagine. Unfortunately, none of those people could be here tonight, so kick back and relax. Prepare yourself for several hours of fun, friendship, fascinating conversation, and fabulous music. All those F's, that's an alliteration and kind of a radio trick. Speaking of radio, you're listening to the most popular radio station in the history of broadcast radio, at least among stations that originate from Chris's living room. It's Curious Times. Your host is a curious listener. Here she is, Chris. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Curious Times. I'm only here for a couple minutes. It's July 3rd, Monday. Diana Monroe is here. And our guest host set on very, very short notice is Corrine DeWinter. Um, let's unmute Corrine. Hi, Corrine. Hi, Chris. How's it going? <laughs> it's going like all of a sudden it was like went from zero to a hundred in like three seconds. You know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> here I am. I'm just wondering. Yeah, Chris, I'm wondering, is this one of your friends that you used to play darts with? No, just somebody I used to work with going to a conference. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you had a psychic thought, did you? <laughs> well, remember when I, I told you like a couple of weeks ago, I think, I said, Wait. one of your friends is going to be calling you, and but I thought it was someone that you used to play darts with, so... There you go. I forgot all about that, so there you go. Okay, let's uh, get Diana on. She's a paranormal investigator, a Reiki master, a teacher, a psychic, and um, all that, <laughs> a medium, and um, she does healing and all that good stuff. So uh, you know that you can find more information about her and check out her blog at www.psychicfrontier.com. And so here comes Diana Monroe. Hi, Diana. Sorry to have this kerfuffle last minute on you. Oh, good evening. No, thanks for having me here. I, I Normally, I guess I would feel a little stood up, Chris, but because I'm so excited for you that you're going to blast out of town and spend time with friends, I'm I'm excited for you. Go for it, girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, <laughs> all, everything, everything just came together, and that's usually how it happens, right? Oh, um, that's, yeah. When maybe Barbara will be mad at me, but um, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I'm going to Skype her right away. Uh, so I'm going to leave you guys in uh, in each other's capable hands. You all know that if somebody calls in, tell them uh, to, uh, if they're on the phone, they just uh, can unmute themselves by just pushing the one button once. And um, then they can mute themselves again by pushing the one again. Otherwise, if they're calling in from uh, uh, within the chat room uh, using their browser, they can just click on their microphone to unmute it. And uh, you guys can uh, do readings that way if anyone chooses to call in for readings. You are, uh, we are recording, and uh, Amy is here right now. So if she's still here later and you guys want to go off the record or anything like that, Amy can just hit the stop record, and it'll be all good to go. And um, so with that said, I have a million things I have to get done. And so sorry to do that to you. I sure didn't know about that 15 minutes ago. Um, you just have uh, an amazing time, Chris. Have a great time. And, uh, thank you. And I'll see you guys all back here on Friday, okay? Sounds good. All right. Have fun. Corrine, thank you. Take it easy. Well, Peace out. Okay, yeah. Corrine, I made the yeah. uh, falafel. I made the falafel. Did you like it? Did you like yeah, it? it was good. yeah, but I'm going to make my own next time. I, I found out how to make my own. So I'll make my oh. own next time. Excellent. Okay. okay. Got, to, got to run. See you guys. Peace out. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's good news that she's going on a trip, you know? Yeah, that's great. 
That's great. Mm -hmm. And she'll have a whole bunch of stories to tell us when she gets back. Oh, yeah. I just went on two short day trips over the weekend, and I was just amazed at what an, what adventures they turned out to be and the things I learned and the history I learned about and got to experience. It was really cool. So, yeah, I'm very excited for her. Yeah. Tell us about your trip. Well, uh, Saturday, my friend and I went to uh, – what was our initial plan? Uh, all these little towns are kind of running together on me now. But one day um, we went to a place in Nebraska – and there wasn't a lot of stuff there, but we decided, hey, let's go. Well, I take that back. We took some beautiful photos, but there weren't any events or anything. We were kind of soaking in the atmosphere. And then we went down to Washington, Kansas, and had dinner there. And there was some old building that was kind of um, modernized, but not too much. They still had a lot of history there. And uh, this guy said, oh, are you from out of town? And I said, yeah, are, are you – you know, the owner, he said, well, I'm the manager, and he answered a bunch of questions and took us back to this old bar, and there was an antique bar there that was in the building since, or had been in some buildings since, like, the 1880s, I think. Mm -hmm. And the person who brought bought this restaurant bar about seven or eight years ago uh, had it moved in there, and it was just this phenomenal place. It looked like you were walking in out of time, really, to about the late 19th century. So that was wow. really cool. And yesterday, her plan was to go to a county fair, and I looked on this website for the fair commission or whatever organization they've got, and they listed all the county fairs, and they were supposed to start this weekend in the state of Nebraska. And so um, went to what was to have been the Franklin County Fair, get there. We're the only people there. The rides are out but not set up. And we saw some people there in a building, and they came out and said, well, can we help you? And we said, yeah, we're here for the first day of the fair. And they said, oh, well, that doesn't start till July 5th. So, wow, the fair that wasn't. So we went back into town and found a historical marker. And this town had maybe a 1,000 people in it. I'd never heard of it before, although that's not unusual because Nebraska is a very big state and little towns everywhere. And anyway, it was in this little valley, beautiful hills around it, and saw this historical marker that talked about uh, an academy called Franklin Academy, and Franklin was the name of the town. And I was reminded of how before governments took over and made everyone go to public schools, or the majority of people go to public schools, back in the last century, I'd forgotten that there were these academies or private schools when other people weren't going to school. The rich people were sending their kids to various schools, and they had one of those in this little town. And um, the monument said they still had one of the buildings left. I think it was a music building. So I want to make another road trip and go back there and kind of check out the building and maybe even organize a, a paranormal investigation there because this school had been running for quite a while at least several decades, and it closed in, I believe it was 1922. And it just fascinated me that here in the middle of nowhere there was this, you know, academy where people had come from all over the country, you know, to go to school. Wow. Yeah, isn't that cool? And I thought, now, I, I, it turned out that I was really glad that the fair wasn't going on because I discovered all this other cool stuff and drove around town and took photos. And in one town there was a um, – it was an old bank building, and I think it said it was built in 1900, and it had been put on whatever that federal register is of the buildings and monuments and stuff. And it had been an old bank at the turn of the last century, like late like 19th century, I guess, and um, now it's a museum for the area. And they had office machinery, I didn't even know what it was. You know, I recognized some of the old typewriters because generations ahead of me, they still had some of those really old rickety typewriters and, and adding machines, manual adding machines and things like that. But there were other office machinery in there. I, I had no idea what it was. And these old, I don't even remember now what they called them, but they're some type of metal furnace or stove. And they had a couple of those there. And it was just fascinating to see all the different things there that um, – you know, there probably aren't many of these these items left, you know, and here were a bunch of them in this one little building in the middle of nowhere. So that was really right. fun. Yeah, yeah I, actually, I love, I love that stuff. 
Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, this was amazing. One thing that struck me as funny was they had a a little bowl setting out for donations, and there was some cash put in there. And when we walked in through there and I took pictures and stuff, there wasn't even anyone running the place. You know, they just trusted it and left it open. I thought, gosh, this is really, really cool and really, really nice, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, was, that is. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it was just fun. You know, little adventures. Like I say, they weren't um, very, didn't travel a lot. I think all of these places were within about two to three hours of where I live. But just these little treasures I didn't even know about. I guess I must be feeling the move I'll be making because I keep thinking, well, while I'm here, why don't we see what is here? You know, some of the cool stuff in the outlying areas because there is a lot of, a lot of interesting stuff there. Oh yeah, I know. See, it's like where I live. I don't like well. I mean, I've been to a lot of places near where I live, but I know there's many more that I have never even been to, and that I, I do think about that, you know. Yeah, yeah, and there there are so many more places I want to go to that are that are far away. But I keep thinking, okay, when I do land wherever I land, I want to be mindful of exploring as much as I can as soon as I get there. And I know one time I moved to Iowa, excuse me, and. And that's what I did. Every week I had to go to one new place, whether it was just a new business or a park or someplace in the town where I lived or if it was a surrounding town. But I, I kept good on my promise, and I just kept checking out new things to me there, and, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, good, good. Um, so I went on a little paranormal expedition the other night on Saturday. You tell? Uh, I will. I so. Anyways, this is a, it was a girl's house who I met through another friend some time ago. And so in the meantime, her boyfriend hung himself in her house. And oh, my. I know. So I, her name is Ellen. And I said, um, well, how do you, how does the house feel? And she says, well, it's, it's it's got weird energies in it. And I said, yeah, I bet. So I, I offered to come and check it out. You know, I mean, I don't know. Anyway, so so I went and first we, she's got this beautiful tent outside. It's like a, it's like a, a beautiful room outside. It's so mm-hmm. cool. Anyway, so I interviewed her and I asked her exactly how she was feeling. She told me the whole story about their relationship. And how it was really not a great relationship at all. And how she, you know, she was very hurt by what he did. And basically, what she was saying was that I'm never going to forgive him for doing this, you know. And I said, I think that you need to, if there's any vestige of his spirit still in the house, you need to forgive him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she said, no, that was like his last big F you to me. And, you know, he was always putting me down, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, Lord. So anyways, and then, Diana, you know, it's funny. I don't know when this is going to stop surprising me, but when she's telling me the story about their relationship, I said, well, what if um, he's not that anymore? You know what I mean? Like, that was not his soul to be a jerk and to be mean and to be narcissistic. So she she looked at me kind of like, what are you talking about? Like, she didn't, you know, I said, well, do you have any faith at all? She goes, well, I believe in, the, in, in Buddhism, but I don't really. So in other words, she didn't really have a mindset about any spirituality, you know? And um, so I said, well, what if I told you perhaps that you guys had known each other in another life and that you decided to do this together in this life? And she goes, I go, what would you say to that? She goes, I don't know. And (laughs) I was like, forget it. Let me let me just drop that conversation. (laughs) So um, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. No, that's okay. Go, Go ahead. Well, I'm wondering, did you get a sense when you were there? I'm wondering if he might have had, I'm not saying he was a wonderful person all the time, but uh, I'm wondering if he might have had an attachment on him or 
for some other type of uh, interference with his soul, with his his mind that was that was influencing him. When you you first started talking about this, I saw this house, and on one side of the house, it was just really up and normal and a home. On the other side, it wasn't quite half of it. It was maybe a fourth to a third of the house. It was just. It's just black. It's just dark. It's heavy. It's not like it's nasty or evil or anything like that. It's just very, very heavy, just kind of like a, like a vacuum in a way, just very, very hollow and not a lot of spirit there at all. And I, I don't know if it has anything to do with this man. I don't know if that's where he hung himself. It may have nothing to do with him. I don't know. But um, like I said, I was just got the feeling there might have been some attachment there, and I was wondering if what you felt about about the house and what you picked up while you were there. Okay, so after I interviewed her and heard her story, we went into the house, and Mm -hmm. uh, I, as I was walking through the rooms, I'm not a big believer in sage, first of all, but I was, you know, saging the rooms, and at the same time I was saying prayers in the rooms. Mm -hmm. And so the room, one of the rooms, downstairs is um it's a huge room and it's got all these antiques and old things in it and the guy that I went with um his name's Todd Todd said you know you have a lot of old stuff in here and you know this could be also carrying some energies that are making the energies weird in this house right so Mm -hmm. she's like oh I don't I don't think so and um, so anyways, but like she didn't know any better, you know, so I'm like, so I'm just saying prayers and I'm burning the sage and I, I had uh, Todd saying the prayers with me and, you know, just speaking out loud. And then I went upstairs and it was obvious which room it was that he killed himself in. It This room could not be more depressing. Ew. Like, first, of, first of all. The walls were painted this gray cell color. I don't know who the hell paints a room that color. I don't think I've ever seen a room painted gray before. Was that your first? Yeah. So I said, who painted this? And she said, oh, I had an old roommate that painted the wall and walls. And I was like, oh, wow. So, and it was complete. The room was almost completely empty because they had moved out a lot of stuff out of there. And, but Todd was, was picking up that, you know, he said, it's very oppressive in here. And also the the room off to the left is very oppressive. And um, so anyways, then I, I, you know, I said more prayers and I spoke out loud in case he was still there. Um, although, uh, you know, I'm not like, I, I can't feel things necessarily that other people can feel, but so I was just speaking out loud and I was, you know, to him and just saying, you know, it's okay and whatever, you know, and, uh, but we just, we don't want any negativity. We don't, you know what I mean? Whatever. So, um, so then um, I went in the other room, I did the same thing, and then we're about to go downstairs, and Todd says, what's up in the attic? And she says, he goes, is there a lot of his stuff up in the attic? And she goes, well, yeah, there is. And um, so he goes, okay. So then he came, we, we went downstairs. And Todd went into the hallway once more to look up the staircase, and he saw a shadow moving. And But he didn't say it at the time because he didn't want to freak out the girl. Right. And um, so um, I, don't, I don't know what he saw because I didn't see it. But um, So then that was the end of it. And then today or yesterday, Todd writes to me on Facebook and says, he feels like he brought home something with him because he couldn't sleep and he couldn't sleep the night we went there. And also he felt really like a weight on his chest and that he woke up in the morning. <laughs> Maybe he's a little dramatic, but he said, I woke up in the morning and the, the, sh- 
the sheets on my bed were around my neck, right? So I'm, I'm like, like, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> Talk about so rest anyway. spirit potential. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, I don't know, you know, I have not heard from her since, but like I said, I, I'm, I don't know how privy she is to this kind of stuff. I don't think she is very aware of a lot of this kind of spiritual stuff, but because she said to me, wow, you're a lot more Catholic than I thought you were. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I was raised Catholic, but I wouldn't term myself a Catholic anymore. But she thought because I was saying Catholic prayers. That, that I was like hardcore Catholic, you know, but I mean, it's it's more than Catholic prayers that I uh, evoke with things, but I do definitely do use Catholic prayers, you know, and so anyway, so that's what you think. Now, he was a hardcore alcoholic and I guess had had a bad childhood. Um, so I'm not sure about, he could have had an attachment. I have no idea. And I don't know how I would figure that out. Well, I've just found that a lot of people, and and I've had uh, close friendships with a few of them, people that, that do expose themselves extensively to alcohol and, and different chemicals, different drugs, they're more susceptible to uh, the attachments and just other spiritual interference of a more malevolent nature. We still have the benevolent protection around us, but, you know, we've got to do our part too. And if we're slacking off with that, um, I've just seen somehow our guard must go down because I've seen people destroyed, their lives destroyed because of, of the chemicals. And a lot of them I could, well, some people I pulled attachments off of them and, and others, um, I don't think really cared if they were there because they were so far gone in their addiction. You know, whether mm-hmm. they thought it was a reality that that could be possible or if they just didn't care, I don't know what the situation was. But uh yeah, it's it's scary. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, she just couldn't st- and so w- when I was in the room that he killed himself in, she broke down and started bawling her head off. And, um, so, you know, and that's an awful thing, and, you know, like, okay, so the night that he killed himself, she had been, she text, he texted her and he said, can I sleep in your room? And she said, no, cause she was trying to break up with him. Mm-hmm. And so she heard some racket at about two in the morning in that room that he was in. And she just thought he was falling cause he had always fallen down, I guess, getting drunk. And uh, the next day, she's she wakes up and she's like, "Well, I should check on him," but she's like, "No, I'm not going to check on him. I'm going to go to work." So she got home from work and the door was locked. His door was locked, and she opened it with somehow somehow, and she found him dead. So she felt really bad that she she went to work. She was at work all day while he was dead, and so she. You know, you can tell she's very sweet, and she's she probably holds a lot of guilt about things that she shouldn't. And um, so this was one thing that is probably going to take her a little while to get over, even though it was not in any way her fault, and I told her that, you know. and But I don't know. But she's got to forgive herself, and she's got to forgive him. I think that's essential. Yeah, I think especially if, if it is like she said, where she thinks it's his last, you know, F you, you know, um, I think forgiveness, who knows, that might make him go away, you mm-hmm. know, because then then the fight stops. You know, if she stops putting up resistance and she forgives him, then she can go on about her life and, you know, who knows what he'll do. But I would just think that if if there is still that antagonism from the other side, you know, and he's not wanting to move on yet. If she forgives him, I don't know if he'd want to hang around. Right, exactly. Like the game would be over for him. Yeah, yeah. And he might be asking for her forgive. I mean, he really might be asking for her forgiveness, you know, because I'm pretty sure that when we cross on to the next existence, 
we, you know, we, we, Diana, I, I don't know if this is just a fairy tale in my mind, but I believe that we become better people, you know, better, not people, better beings, I should say. Do you think so? Well, I think, and and I've not had, that I know of, a, a near-death experience, but I've had different out-of-body experiences where this is kind of where I'm coming from, and other people I've talked to with similar situations, I think that uh, when we when we leave the body, it seems like we kind of go back to who we were before we came in. We lose It's like we lose some of that sludge that we pick up in human life, but there's still the, the injuries and some of the scars to the spirit. So I don't, I think we definitely have a heightened sense of awareness to some degree, but I think that depends on, in part at least, who we were when we left, you know, and how much of that, uh, the, those scars are carried over. You know, I've heard a lot of people talk about, oh, well, when we die, you know, we're just instantly, you know, perfect again. And that may be true. You know, I don't know, but that's not really the feeling I get. I think everybody's different. And so there are probably different degrees of of awareness and different degrees just of what 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 each one of us experiences after we take our last breath here. Right, but you agree, do you agree that we have a higher self? Oh yeah, yeah. I think there's a, a higher kind of an all knowing part of us that that just keeps going on. You know, right? And I, and I, th- I think that's where we get a lot of our a lot of people I know, I've had a lot, and I've, I think you might have talked about, too, uh, memories that we have where we don't know where we had them because they aren't from our current life. But you can yeah. see places or, or people or you recognize people right away and you haven't met them yet. Is it a past life thing? Well, it might be or it might be something else. You know, and I think that's that part of what you're talking about, that that um, spirit, soul, or whatever that that more permanent part of us is. Right. And I mean, I'm pretty sure that anybody in your life that does something such as kill themselves in your house is part of your soul group. And, um, you know, like, for instance, my ex-boyfriend, um, he's, he, you know, like my mediums tell me, yeah, he was definitely part of your life in the past, uh, many past lives. And And my mother from beyond said, Yes, he's part of our group. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I totally believe that because for some reason, you know, what, what, for whatever the reason is, he left me. And, um, but I mean, that was part of the whole plan. Like he, you know, he, in other words, he's working some, and somehow what he did to me in my life means, has meaning and purpose. And I don't quite know what it is right now but one day I believe I will now if I'm living this life as a Hitler type person a mean person a narcissistic person and I cross over yeah I I think that I might not so easily stumble back to light or you know being nice and 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 soulful Uh, I might have a, a hard time but so I don't know I agree with you. I don't think everyone is perfect when they cross over, instantly perfect. I think they have to work on it. Some people some people have to work on it. He's been gone for a year. It was actually a year or a week ago that he did this. So, I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on, you know. I just want to say to everyone listening, if you guys want to call in and get a reading from Diana, the number is 631 631- Three five three four three four two, and you have to enter seven 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 nine four when you get the prompt. So, um, but anyway, so I, I don't know. You know what I mean? All I know is that I've heard from my loved ones on the other side, and they seem pretty healed and happy. You know, if if they ever had any issues, which. Some of my family members have, obviously. Other ones were not, you know, they didn't have have any apparent issues on earth. But um, so who knows? Your mother's still alive, right, Diana? Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. I I was just, no, I mean, I just was check. I thought she was. I just wasn't sure. Yeah, in fact, I just talked to her earlier tonight. 
Mm-hmm. Good. Where is she? She is just outside of Lincoln, where I currently live. She's about 10 miles away from me. Okay. Is that what? You didn't move there for that. You moved there with your husband, right, or something? No, I um, moved here from a place out in the middle of nowhere. I went there for a while, and I was going to go back. And uh, But then I had an opportunity to to move to a bigger place, but I didn't, I wasn't able to go to either coast like I wanted to, so I just picked Lincoln, and um, it was nice that my mother was here, because I thought, well, she needs some help, you know, I'm here for that, but when I moved here, I planned on staying maybe about two years, and I've been here about five years more than that, so, you know, we make plans, and then life happens, so we have to kind of roll with it. Yeah, totally. But, I mean, it makes sense that you would be there at this time in your mother's life. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that, you know, uh, things did kind of work out the way they were. So so I was here for that. Mm-hmm. Right. But I have to get over – what I have to overcome in my life is the need to – like like when I was just telling you about this Ellen woman who who I said, you know, d- really doesn't have a clue with spirituality in the spir- spiritual realm. That See, I have to get over because I'm like, what? I'm surprised. I didn't say to her, what's wrong with you at all? But I have to get over that, you know, some people are into that and they don't want to know about it. And you know what I mean? I, you know, I just got to, well, if, if a, lot of, a lot of people, we don't know. Some people are more spiritual than what they let on that they are. Because mm-hmm. I know I've got a couple of members of my family where they don't talk about it at all. But if I mention something in a response, I can just tell that, okay, they are somewhat spiritual, you know, but they're just very private about it. But, um, you know, I don't know. It's been my experience of people that are really more spiritual in terms of, I, I don't even know, but just, you know, they they seem to be more connected and a little more at peace. I've noticed they, they tend to have the more stable relationships, you know, and it sounds like this, what this woman Ellen experienced was not like that at all. So I don't no. know. No. Right. Yeah. Um but as I said, I just, I, I'm, I'm like, you know, cause I always think everyone's like you guys. And then I encounter people and I say something and they're like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, I just got to get over like, you know, being like, you know, even to myself, you know, saying to myself, like, what? Oh my God. You know, like what, why haven't you like, why aren't you curious about anything? Why aren't you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's just, you know, that's just my ego saying, you know, what the hell's wrong with you, you know, but it's it's not right. Anyway, whatever. Um, so I'm trying to think of what, are you reading any books, Diana? You know, not at the moment. <laughs> I had planned on doing that and then I've just had some, life crises come up or I've just kind of had to deal with that so and and a couple health issues come up so I've had to deal with so I'm not reading as much as what I normally do I read every day but I used to dig into really deep uh, spiritual books uh, one was the set was his name Ray oh, I can't even remember his name now but there was a man who went to Mount Shasta allegedly in the 1930s and had all these deep spiritual experiences and he wrote about 20 books on it and i i have a few of those and normally i will just go over those again and again and get little nuggets of uh wisdom and see what how that helps strengthen my intuition and spirituality but i've i've been taking a little unplanned break from that are are you reading some right now that you're you're really fond of well you know i was talking about this the other night you weren't here but um i was reading or I am still re- I'm rereading it. Uh, how to read the aura, but the title doesn't quite fit the whole thing. 
it is how to read the aura, but it's like there's so much more to it. And it was written, as I was saying um, the other night, it was written in 1971. And Diana, I feel like a lot of the older books have true, truer information than the new stuff. Because as I was saying to Amy also the other night, that um, it seems like a lot of the new, newer books on this, on these subjects are like watered down. And it's like a, a, a game of telephone was played and the, the information was translated. And then by the time it got to the last person recently that it was translated to, it didn't at all um, resemble the original you know, statement in the game of telephone. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I appreciate older stuff because there was a lot in this, and there is a lot in this book, How to Read the Aura. It's by W.E. Butler. W. And uh, Butler. And I'll have to that up. Yeah. Um, and... He's saying that when, you know, when somebody is reading your aura and they say, oh, it's a beautiful pink and light blue and blah, 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 (laughs) (laughs) that that only means, that doesn't mean that the person's spiritual, so to speak. It means that the person is not grounded and that they have no conviction about much in their life. In other words, they're wishy-washy. Okay. He said the normal aura for somebody is muddy, brown, or grayish. That's like a normal aura for people that, you know, especially people that, uh, you know, actually know better than the average person who hides everything and, and like, is fake and only likes material materialistic things and such. Not that there's anything wrong with those people. <laughs> But I mean, (laughs) so Dan, Dan is on the line and he would like a reading from you. And I'm trying to tell him that all he has to do is unmute. And I'm not sure. He says he's on the phone and I'm not sure how to do that. How's Um, this? Good. Hey, Dan. Hey. How's it going? I'm busy getting caught up on yard work since I got a few days off. Of course, right? You got a few days off and you still got to work your ass off. Yeah, but at least I got people blowing things up around me. forgot you were recording. (laughs) I almost said something bad there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Hi, Dan. What, What can I help you with tonight? Oh, I don't know. Can I just do a general or... What's uh, what's your normal procedure? Well, it's it's up to you. If you've got something specific on your mind, you can jump in. As soon as you started talking, I was seeing I was seeing you outside. There were a number of structures around you, but I wasn't sure if they were familiar. I I kind of get a sense you might be doing some travel, if not right away, sometime later this year. Do you have any travel plans coming up? Um, no, but I think work does for me. That's the rumor. Okay. Okay. Well, the the buildings I'm seeing are on these hills, and and I see mountains off in the distance, and maybe that's where you live. I don't know, but uh, I just got the feeling that they were unfamiliar buildings to you. That's why I thought you might be might be traveling somewhere else or potentially moving to a new area. But uh, you got a color maybe, on those buildings. What's that? I said you got a color on those buildings. Pink. They're light in color. They're not brick. They're like uh, white and or kind of a blue gray. Yep, that's my house and the shop. Okay. Are, are, are you in, a the, hill. in the hills? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, there's hills all around us. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm picking up a real pretty peaceful calm around you in that area, but work is kind of pushing – to the forefront, like there are issues there. There's a lot of 
and and maybe this isn't work, but somewhere besides your home, I'm picking up this kind of chaotic energy. Is there something new going on at work, like a, a change in management or something like that, where a lot of changes come about? No, you might be getting that from our new neighbors. Um, started the first off with a heroin overdose, I believe, and that's the second one in two months. So, yeah, it's, I'm not really happy, and they're just a bunch of idiots over there. So okay. That's probably what you're picking up on there. Yeah, there's some, some chaotic energy that's touching you, but like I said, it, it, around this area that's really nice and peaceful in the in the hills, it's, it, you're pretty calm Used to be. at home, right? <laughs> that's what I'm getting yeah. anyway. You're pretty calm there. Yeah, uh, let's yeah see, it else? used to be a lot better, though, but... Yeah, maybe the management of the law enforcement as well. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of this weird religion taking over here, and it's they pretty much uh, don't do anything to their church members, whether it's manufacturing meth or selling meth or even being an unregistered child molester. Just they just seem to not do anything about it. So it's uh, wow, really, really weird. Who doesn't know yeah. anything about it? Well, oh, there... the, the, the county is pretty much run by a church, just like pretty much every law enforcement. And this one's just uh, a really up religious group. So it's, I don't know what label they go by, but their their values are way out of whack, let me put it that way. And they kind of run a lot of the show behind the scenes, don't they, in terms of um, not just things that they would do publicly within a church, but I get the feeling they have a lot of connections or that you might even live in one of those places where about 10% of the population are, you know, the regular population and 90% are the people that are kind of doing dark, ugly things. Yeah, that's about right. Didn't used to be that way, but it is now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, I get the feeling it's been going on there for quite a while, but the thing is the people who are, for lack of a better word, normal people that are living there, uh, they, uh, they they just don't know about it because these people are so good at, at hiding what they do and good at putting on the face in public. Yeah. You know, they can, they can conduct business with you, and you would never know if they were torturing their children or, you know, dealing in sex yeah. trade, anything like that. But that um, – but it, but it's, but once on the inside of that, I get that it is very, very dark, and so that that's good that you're on the outside of that because if you're on the outside, they they leave people alone. You know, it's just the people that are trying to kind of break into that, or people that are already in the system uh, that they run that that where they cause a lot of a lot of anguish. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know the neighbors' names, right, Dan? Um, the one that actually moved in there and rented the place, female, yeah, I know her name, but I don't know the last name. We got pictures of the vehicles that just did a drug deal here. That's, that was pretty nice. I was out working in the yard when the car pulls up. Another car pulls up. They go in the garage there, and they do a little deal, and the one car leaves, and the other car leaves. It's like, but it was the same guy that showed up right before the heroin overdose, so, you know. Oh, wonderful. Mm-hmm. Is there a Marie so, connected with that? You know, it sounds like there is another, actually two other females stay in there, along with God knows how many guys, two-bedroom house, just so you know. Uh, and I believe I've heard that name, and I think it's the skinny little blonde, that bleach blonde that has the whole tweaker thing going on. Oh, God. I think her name's... Maria or Maria. Are they brand new, like less than a month there? No, they've been here probably three months or so. Okay. They haven't really interacted much with you and your family, though, have they? Oh, um, no. I gave them a chance, and it just was the same 2.30 in the morning, drunken idiots, spinning tires, revving engines. She had a guy moved in there that turned it into an auto shop. He was flipping cars. That lasted a month before I got the homeowners in on it and ran his butt out. Um, you can't have a business here. You can't be flipping cars. He cut the mufflers off of every vehicle he brought in there. 
the first thing you did. So. Oh my God. When you're, when you're lucky to get eight hours of sleep a night and you get woke up to revving engines, it's really not. Yeah, and I know. I know you're not going to want to hear this, but right now I'm getting the feeling they're not going to be leaving anytime soon. At least not the the main person that's there. Yeah. That it that would be. Yeah, I got that feeling. Or what they're doing, even if they're they're dealing drugs or sex trade or whatever, making noise in the middle of the night, it just gets going to take quite a bit to to get them out. Yeah, the the uh, it to whatever the the group is that is kind of running things behind the scenes. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I got the homeowners involved, sent them some video and audio, and and sent them all of it. And homeowners are rather upset by the lack of diligence in the law enforcement end of things. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a homeowners meeting where the sheriff will actually show up. So I can bring him some video and audio and particularly the one where the deputy comes in my house and tries to move my security camera. Well, yeah. I, I know <laughs> people that have grown up in, in these types of, for lack of a better word, Illuminati towns where they're kind of running everything behind the scenes that um, the police won't do anything because they're they're scared. You know, they know oh, that well, you know, the they, landlord is a, ex-sheriff from a different county and his wife was up here probably a couple years ago asking about him uh, trading sex for rent with one of his tenants and it's not the first time I heard about it. I've heard it from several tenants that were upset when they left and then uh, his wife apparently caught him with uh, a gal named Kelly. And, uh, yeah, she was leaving her. I thought the daughter was 15 years old. My wife said she was 13, leaving her home alone for a week when she'd take off with this guy. Bird. To pay to pay her rent. So I'll give you an idea of the class of law enforcement we have around here. Wow. Yeah, really. Jesus. Is there somebody yeah. in that? Is there somebody in that department with a B, last name B? Do you know, like um, B-R? I was getting a name like Barger or Bargain or something like that, too. Yeah, but I didn't huh. know if it was a person or a town or what it was. Well, that's interesting because when I was metal detecting, I met a couple guys new to the hobby, and they turned out to be law enforcement, and that does fit the last name of one of them. And they seem to be pretty good stand-up guys, so... They're out of a they're that, city law that, enforcement from a different, you know, different area. But I think that you need to hook up with that guy, so to speak, so he can help you gain influence with your, with, with your own uh, department there. That's what I was getting, too. It wasn't anything bad. It was somebody that might be a good connection, just kind of a resource. Right. Yeah. And, and the funny thing is, is these two guys – Worked with the landlord before he got fired. So not my landlord, but the neighbor's landlord before he got fired. So they know all kinds of. And I filled them in on a lot of the stuff going on, and his wife coming up, and yeah, they're they're aware. But I think with this heroin traffic going on, it's going through two different counties, so they might they might be able to shut this down. You know? Yeah, that's terrible. That's really and now how how close is the house to yours, Dan? Really close. Front door is probably thirty five, forty feet from their garage door. And it's across. Sweet. Yeah, it's Yeah, and we got a it's kind of a dead end road. There's three houses on this driveway. There's one on the left, and there's my house. And to the right is the rental house, and at the end is our shop. And we kind of own the majority of the cul-de-sac, but the landlord over there is built out into the turnaround spot. So these guys turn around in our yard, run over my wife's flower beds. We've had arbors taken out. Um, garage doors been hit so many times. Jesus. So I put cameras up and all that good stuff, and retaliation by but, blowing stuff up for nine hours on yeah. a Sunday night. 
Right. Well, I I don't want to, like, forgive me, I don't want to cause any alarm or anything, but I feel like you you have insurance on, on that building, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I see some kind of thing happening at the rental house where they are that has that involves fire and I I don't know why but that was like the first thing that came to mind when you said the house is really close and um yeah. so you know I I mean I hope that doesn't happen and not that not that you know but I mean I, I don't know so just you know take note of that you know but you're yeah. protected you know yeah. what I was thinking yeah. about the people in the rental house that they weren't really um it's not like they're going to single you and your family out or anything. They're kind of doing their own thing, but they're not they're not the brightest people. No. And oh god, no. Really have to <laughs> kind of more on guard just because of their own stupidity, if nothing else. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm yeah, they're they, they might be trading or working for people that are that are very bright and connected to the inside system there, but they're not. So uh, just kind of be mindful of that, you know, as you go about your day. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wish I could give you better news than that. <laughs> but uh, sadly, I don't really see them leaving anytime soon. That's not to say I can't change. Of course it can. Yeah. I've got a feeling it'll, it'll change. It may take six months or so. But, yeah, it's you know, just not get the right Get the right people. Yeah. Yeah. The right people. So... There has been a couple deaths close to my uh, family, my wife's friends, um, this past week. Um, a girl. In the, uh, um, yeah, one of them was. Was her name a name? No. Was she pretty young? Like young adult? Yeah. Or- yeah, I think she was maybe mid to well, mid to upper twenties, maybe thirties. I'm not too sure how old she was. I've only met her a few times. And, uh, okay, cause I was just sensing someone pass. It wasn't. It definitely had not lived a long life for sure. I I think she was fifty two. Oh no. Younger than that. Younger, okay. Pretty sure. Pretty sure she's younger than me, so I'm thinking she couldn't have been too much. Oh, actually, my stepdaughter and her kind of grew up together, so I'm thinking late 30s, early 40s. Oh. Oh, then I'm going to somebody different. Yeah, Yeah, I see somebody so, Diana, I'm sorry, I'm busting into your reading. <laughs> oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm glad we're both here to, to give him information, but I think I'm tuning in on someone else, so you go. I see a short, shorter woman with, like, sort of um, wavy uh, reddish-brown hair. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, She uh, her color changed, of course, but last time I saw her, I saw that fit. Um, and she was a little, she wasn't like, you know, real, she she wasn't real skinny, but she wasn't like totally overweight either. Just kind of like healthy looking. Stocky. A little yeah, stocky. stocky. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's about right. Oh. Okay. Um, don't tell me how she died. Not that you were gonna, but, um. No. Uh, Diana, go ahead. I'm just thinking. Well, I, I'm i still tuning in on someone that was very young or at least looked young, but what I was getting was cancer or some disease that this person had died from. So I, unless that the person Dan's talking about, you know, I might be tuning into something about her, but I think I'm picking up on some someone else uh, that might have died fairly recently around Dan than the, the person you're tuning into. Oh. Well, the other one that passed away did die of cancer, but it was a male, and he was a lot older. Okay. Young. Yeah. I feel like... See what 
I feel like that this woman who's in my mind right now, and I'm not sure if it's her, but um, she um, um, I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> I don't think it was it was an accident, uh, but it was oh my god, um, something to do with her. Her uh, circumstance. No, I hold on. I'm sorry. I feel like she. It was something like that. It was her kind of not not that any death is anyone's fault necessarily, but something she did something that caused her own death. Is that accurate or not? Um, that's the way things look right now. But oh. uh, that's uh. We're still waiting for word back from the officials. So, yeah, there's I mean, some her holes in stories, and yeah. Right. Her name didn't begin with an F, did it? No. Okay. Sorry. Um, oh, it was it her birthday recently before that happened? Oh. Oh, let me think. It might have been. I think I remember somebody posting happy birthday. Yeah, actually, I think it was probably a month ago, maybe more. Past few months are blur, so it's kind of... <laughs> okay, yeah. When no, was I that thing, it. you know? Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, shit. Um, sorry. Um, mm. Oh, I was worried about saying blowing shit up. <laughs> <laughs> we got free rain here. <laughs> That's kind of frightening yeah. because once my colorful vernacular cuts loose, it it doesn't pull back anytime soon. So I'm trying to refrain. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so your wife your wife was friends with, I think your wife this this woman really kind of looked up to your wife, did she not? Like as a I don't think your yeah, wife had any had what? Like she looked she I don't I don't think this lady had any sisters. I think she looked up to your wife as a sister of sorts. Yeah, they were neighbors for a long time, way, way back. And they kind of, her daughter grew up with the lady's daughter. And my wife worked with the lady for decades. And, yeah, it's, uh, they, uh, even her, the lady's son is really fond of my wife. And, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's. It was kind of a tight knit group there. Yeah, t you said tight knit, and before you said tight knit, I was like something to do with sewing. Like she sewed <laughs> something for her. <laughs> you know, I don't know if she sewed it, but um, there was a lot of blankets and hats coming towards my wife from. Her family, when she had cancer, when my wife had cancer, and she was doing the oh. chemo, there was a lot, a lot of stuff like that coming. So might have, some of it might have been homemade or made by a family member. Right. Okay. Now, and when I'm, I'm, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Diana. Go ahead. No, no. Oh. Go ahead, Diana. I'm sorry. Well, I was just asking, you know, if there was a, a spirit. I was going to see if uh, there was one specific spirit that wanted to step up. Now, I'm hoping this message is for you, Dan, but I did see a man. I don't know if it's the, the person you were talking about that recently died, but this man said he had died of cancer, and he's he's a handsome guy, and I'd say he's maybe at most early 40s. And his hair wasn't long, but it's longer than what a lot of gentlemen wear their hair right now. It's not real, real short. And he's wearing kind of a 
button down, button down collar shirt, and he's got his arms folded in front of him. Does that sound like anybody that you've known? You know, I don't, I don't think so. This guy was probably in his seventies, had his hair short. Every time I've seen him, um, pretty much ex law enforcement kind of ex military, ex law enforcement. Um, yeah, kind of. Okay. <laughs> so he's I, I'm a hard ass. A little bit younger, and he had slightly wavy hair, and. And he's just kind of nodding his head and maybe a message for someone else. I don't know, but he's just saying, like, uh, it's okay. I'm okay, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I don't know. I'm not I'm not getting a name. I'm not sure sure who it is. But but that oh. was the spirit that stepped up when I said, is there anybody that wants to, to talk here tonight? Yeah, I'll have to think about that. But then again, you know. I get the feeling it was someone that was very intelligent, very intelligent and very eloquent, very well spoken. Pretty, pretty mellow, pretty balanced personality. Yeah. So you got on his bad side. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, he and was, maybe he's showing himself to me earlier in his life too. You know, cause I get yeah, I was gonna say they sometimes go back to where they were weren't sick or happier or. Or the best time of their you know? life. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. How it is. So I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe that's him. Maybe it's not. But uh, whoever it is, he's just pretty, pretty mellow guy. And uh, I could see though had a bit of this makes sense for law enforcement. The word comes through as control. He had to be controlling over certain things. Yeah, he could he be a little more mellow about some things, but other things he was really pretty rigid about. Yeah. Yeah. Stepdaughter's ex husband started bad mouthing her and yeah, he shut him down quite eloquently, I guess would be the word. Just what? shut his ass. Oh, yeah. Um <laughs> Oh, well my my stepdaughter she recently got divorced and um it was this restaurant bar place and her ex husband came in and started bad mouthing her. And he, I wasn't there for it, but it got back to me and how he just kind of politely and eloquently shut him down. Just basically told him to shut the hell up. So it was in a polite way. Yeah. Yeah, those, was, uh, those are my favorite people that know how to use just a few words, but they make their point and people usually respond. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that and he was probably and six or six feet tall, so. Yeah. So what I get for the girl that I that I think that is trying to talk to me is that Dan, she she had issues with depression also. And like what I heard was you don't even know how hard it is to go through the days without you know trying to like keep up like and and she she also made reference to songs that she used to listen to that were kind of like sad songs i don't know if your wife would remember that but um something along those lines of yes i was i you know i you know i wasn't i wasn't right you know what i mean in this life you know i, I don't know you know i'm not sure forgive me if i'm totally off but <clears throat> I just feel no. like she had some sort of sadness in her, like an inherent sadness that just got out of control because something about, I think, freaking, um, she, she wasn't married, right, Dan? Um, that's, they were separated and, yeah, not, uh, Last I heard, they were separated in restraining orders and going through divorce, and he'd been physical with her, and yeah. Right, Next right, thing right. No, they they find her at his house, so which so doesn't make yeah. She leaves a lot of questions for everybody. So she died there at his house. Yeah. Ooh. Um, shit. 
Huh. Diana, what are you picking up on that? I'm just kind of getting a block on that. I apologize. I'm I'm just getting a very heavy a heavy feel, heavy energy about the whole thing. Like I'm getting drugs. Yeah, I'm getting that there was drugs involved. Mm. And, and there's uh, energy that needs to be cleared by the people that are still around, or it can affect them negatively too. Because I just see it having a, a pretty big emotional impact on everybody else that's left. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah, can't be drugs. Go ahead. Mother lost her husband. Was it Thursday night? And Friday morning lost the daughter. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. So it's uh, not good for anybody. No. No, no. Jesus. Yeah, less than 12 hours. Would she do drugs, Dan? Do you know? Not that I'm aware of. She didn't appear to be the mess, you know, mess mouth. She was too stocky to be, you know, doing that stuff, which is very popular in town. And But now we see more heroin being popular. But I, I doubt she would go towards that. Now, her husband, he kind of has that whole tweaker aura to him. So that's a... I, yeah. Well, he might, might he not have convinced her to do drugs because she, she had just lost her dad. You know what I mean? And she was there for a reason, though. She went there, but she wanted comfort of some sort, even though he was an asshole. I'm sorry. He was a jerk. And, um, but I feel like she did go there for a purpose, you know what I mean? Like in her her own mind. I don't know. Because why would somebody go to a house of a guy that she had a restraining order against, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I've seen it happen a lot, though. You know, you get those yeah. emotional entanglements, especially when you've got the uh, some type of chemicals involved, whether it's alcohol or anything else. And it just, I don't know, it seems to accelerate everything when it comes to the emotional attachments and things involved in those types of relationships. Yeah, Mm -hmm. with the holiday weekend, though, nothing has come back from the county, so there's no toxicology, Mm -hmm. no no report of really any kind. Right, so it's it's a mystery of her death is is somewhat of a mystery right now. Will you let us know what happens with the toxicology report? Yeah, if I'm given that information. Yeah, it's a, yeah I'm curious. It's just yeah. right right now it, it looks like a suicide, but the way she did it doesn't jive with um, yeah, I was kind of getting firearms, or you know, I mean, she, she has access to firearms. Uh, you know, I mean, it's not like why well, pick a painful way over a a quick way. It just doesn't jive with me. Yeah, I was wondering if it was made to look like a suicide. That was the feeling I got that there's just a, a lot of pieces that we don't know, a lot of pieces of the puzzle that are trying to be hidden. Yeah, that's that's what I heard when I heard the way she did it. Was like, no fucking, well, oh, excuse me, yeah. no way. Um, it was, uh, you know, because even her Facebook page, she's got shotguns, forty-four magnums, forty-four, forty-five. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it just didn't jive. It just didn't fit. You know, I pick a right. You know. Didn't she I, use I, on a regular Dan, basis? I keep hearing you. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Oh, I just wonder. No, I keep hearing you. feeling like she, she, this was somebody that, if she didn't use guns on a regular basis anyway, she was at least around them. Well, yeah, she she was. And let me just mute this. And... Oh, geez, this thing's going to keep telling me who's calling. Oh, look. Unplug it. 
There we go. <laughs> That's <phone's> okay. <laughs> well, the phone tells you who's calling, so I just really, <laughs> really didn't didn't need that but going on hearing, right now. I, I keep hearing the name Sherry, uh, Dan. Sherry. Ah, uh, no. 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 <sighs> I just tell you. That's why. I, is there anyone named Chris yeah, just involved? Tell Maybe not the person that died, but a Chris that's close to this person. Um. Yeah. Actually, I, I think we were we we're over there and dropped off uh, flowers, and somebody was leaving, and I think Chris had to move her car. And apparently, she was pretty close because she was talking to a high school friend of. The deceased, and yeah, it seemed like she had a lot of information that was, you know, only be shared with a close friend. So yeah. yeah, awesome. Um, so who? Oh my God. All right, so Chris was her friend, and Chris probably knows more than most people about this whole thing. Yeah. Probably. So, yeah. Well, I didn't 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 uh, talk to the person at all, but. Right. So, what was her name, Dan? Jody. Jody. Mm-hmm. I didn't get that at all. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think her birthday was in May. You said, like, as I said, was her birthday recent before the passing? And I think, ask your wife this, was her birthday in May, I wonder. Yeah, when she, she's still taking care of a few things in the yard, so, but I'll I'll have to ask her. Yeah, so... uh, I just want to say also that Yvette is on the line and she's going to unmute when we're done with reading. So we do have at least her that wants a reading also. Okay. Well, so, I was just checking. No, we want you to stay here, Dan. It's like we're not <laughs> pushing you off. You know what I mean? I mean, oh, I've been much. wondering what the, what the hell's going on with you, you know? A lot of work, very little sleep. That's what's been going on. Day shift, night shift, day shift, night shift, double shift. That's that's my life. So, mm. so it's road construction. When the weather's good, you gotta you gotta go. You gotta get it while you can. And I'm not gonna turn down Saturdays and Sundays. You know, that's time and a half Saturday, double time Sunday. And then I found out that Saturday after 6 p.m. is double time. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't you don't need to ask. Just put me down. More <laughs> <laughs> <Sure>, right? <laughs> yeah, just send me a start time. I'll, I'll be there. Yeah, it's. Uh... Can I ask you one thing? Did you recently have a turkey sandwich? No. Okay. No. <laughs> but I got like twenty pounds. <laughs> I do have twenty pounds of pork belly in the fridge, ready to go in the smoker tomorrow morning. Oh, yum! <laughs> yeah, bacon. Twenty pounds of bacon. I wonder if that'll last longer than a week. <laughs> Maybe you've had the turkey sandwich. I know sometimes uh, when I'm helping people in a row, especially on the phone lines with the technology, sometimes I'm getting messages for people that might have been one or two calls to come. You know. Have you noticed that yet, Corrine? No, I'm just starting out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was listening when I was at work, and I just lit a cigarette, just lit it, put my lighter in my pocket, and Kathleen was doing her readings, and she just says, man, somebody just lit a cigarette in here or something. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Do I need to put it out? Oh, yeah, it was... Yeah, she said it smelled good. She smoked for so many years, and she quit, so it's, I kept smoking. <laughs> it was just weird, because the minute I lit it and put that, I would even exhaled from lighting it, and she's like, oh, man, it smells like funny. smoke in here. And I'm like, oh. 
<laughs> yeah, it happens sometimes. It's it's kind of yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, amazing yeah. the way the messages come through sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Although some yeah, other but... lady that I explained that some other lady was like, "Oh, that's my blah 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 that died, and she used to smoke her head off and whatever, you know." But yeah, I just didn't know if anybody would pick up on anything because since we all still have questions and you know. Well, if it's you know if it's of any help, what I said is that I think that she was the cause of her own death. I know I I don't get the feeling it was somebody else that did that to her. I think that she just that was just uh, you know screw that you know what I mean. And I think she had a depression issue. I don't know if she did or not, but I feel like she did. And that she just, you know, sometimes we just feel like it's beyond us. And we don't want to continue. We want to cut out and then we start again. You know what I mean? So, but it's sad. It's freaking sad, you know? I don't know. Yeah. It is. It's uh, really messed up. The only way to put it, it's really messed up. I can't use that other word, even though I want to. <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, yeah affected a lot of people, and she did do it herself. Pretty damn selfish. Not thinking of her mom or what her mom's going through. Or... Oh, I agree. I agree. But I mean, man, who the hell knows? You know what I mean? Like. For, you know, Dan, like I was saying earlier, it's like this shit happens to us and we're like, why did this happen? Why is this happening? And it's like there could be reasons and there is, there are reasons that this stuff happens to us. And there's a purpose and meaning to these things, even for the mother, right, that that lost her husband and then lost her daughter, not even a day later. There's a meaning and a purpose for it, and I I gotta believe that, and I do believe that, and it's just like now we're not gonna know until we're in the other form of who we're gonna be, a realm or whatever you want to call it. But um, but I gotta believe there's a purpose, you know. Unfortunately, it doesn't help anyone to know that at the time they're going through it, you know. Well, she might get some answers later. You know, this is so such a recent, you know, crisis upon crisis. But, um, you know, we're living in a time where things are shifting so rapidly just in terms of the, the energies everywhere, the people and everything around us that, um, you know, she might have answers, some resolution, not resolution, but just maybe some more answers or, or some type of reason yet in this lifetime yet i i hope she does i hope she can find some way to to find make some type of peace with it i just cannot imagine what that would be like you know to go through that no no shit either i actually didn't want to go with my wife to deliver flowers i was just like eh, i don't want to go over there <laughs> Kind of selfish on my part, but I, I went ahead and drove her. When I knew her brother, I worked with her brother, I worked and I knew his children. In fact, one of his kids spotted me while I was at work the other day. and Yeah, they thought I worked for a different company. And we had that all straightened out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was, it would have been good to see everybody under different circumstances. And didn't really want to see this many people after a long period of time under these circumstances because it's like a constant reminder next time you see that person. You know, that's that's my experience anyway. Yeah. That, yeah. That sorrow, sorrow comes back, or you know, you can see somebody walking on the street. It's like, hey, how you doing? And you just wipe the smile off their face, and it's just like, oh shit, didn't mean to do that. 
Yeah. One of the one of the reasons I didn't want to go, but I did. I made my wife happy. Well, yeah, I, even if you yeah. go ahead, Diana. I just to say, time seems to have a way of, of smoothing some of those things out. I I think it'll get easier, you know, as as time passes. But it's so fresh, you know, that yeah, it probably will be tough for a while. Like you said, when you when you see these people again. Mm-hmm. Another another reason I didn't go because I have like this joke Tourette's thing, or I just really I'm a smart ass at the most inappropriate times. <laughs> but I held back this time, so. <laughs> Worked out good, yeah. Trying to get people to laugh when I shouldn't. Well, listen to your intuition because there might be a time when you might have the opportunity. It might be the perfect time to do that, too. You know, we just don't know. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for the people there. Maybe it's something they need. Maybe we'll bring them a laugh. We don't know. Yeah, I just seeing people in pain and crying. And the mom, I almost walked up to her and said, so you're single now? But I didn't. Oh my God! <laughs> she would have laughed, but her son probably would have kicked my ass. But that's, <laughs> he's a big boy. Uh, yeah, he, he would have he would have whooped me. So, yeah, there's you know I just hate seeing people in pain, and I try to make them laugh. And you know, I did a good job of holding back this time. Proud of myself on that one. Good for you, Dan. Yeah, there was a few. Could have, could have piped up. I didn't, but you probably have another reading to go to and or do, and I'm just well, probably pushing the though. shit out of everybody. Can you, can you stay with us, Dan? Um, yeah, but I'm gonna mute. Okay. That that works. That way you don't hear me making cigarettes and doing stuff and. Yeah, but stay with us, okay? Okay. Thanks for calling right, thank and good luck. All right, and thank you both. You bet. Okay. Bye. So, uh, Eva, are you there, Eva? I thought I heard her talking earlier. Maybe not. Eva, are you there? Maybe she's muted. Maybe she's taking care of something on her end. Yeah, right. And if so if anyone is on the line right now that wants to get a reading from Diana, I promise I won't bust into the reading. <laughs> I don't mind a bit, but, Corrine. I, you know, a lot of times my intuition comes through really loud and clear when, you know, I get the initial messages and then someone will say something, whether it's the person I'm reading for or a friend, you know, some situation like this and i'll just see a a wave of new images or get other words come and and then sometimes it becomes more collaborative but in those situations some people have told me that really helped them that they had a couple people giving them feedback so don't hold back kareen for crying out loud come on okay (laughs) our intentions are good we're here to help where we can and so just just roll with it be yourself thank you diana okay so yvette you're here she says she's here and I can't hear her. I Does, cannot. Do you know how? To, yeah. Do you know how to unmute, Yvette? Does she need to hit one? Um, she needs to hit the thing. If she called in through this format through Intuitalk, she needs to unmute her button at the top. Um, and if she's called in from Skype or some other source, you have to dial one one. Okay. So, Eva, if you're on Skype, you have to press 1-1. One, one. I'm on the phone. Okay, so press 1-1 one, one and try to say something. Hello? Yes. I heard Hi, her. Eva. Hi. Interesting. <laughs> Hi, Eva. <laughs> Hi, guys. What can we help you with tonight? Wow, you guys are really thorough and fun. Oh, bless your heart. Um, I guess I have two questions. Okay. Maybe three. <laughs> um, I guess let's take the first question. Um, 
work. Work. Um, a lot of interesting works, you know, um, in the last few weeks. Consistent, really nice. Um, just looking for what other variety is out there for me and opportunities and just different stuff. Are you in a place right now that's really dynamic where there's a lot of motion? Maybe I'm seeing where you're going to end up. I, I ask because I just see people trading things. There's like papers, documents, money just passing from one hand to another, and it's it's very quick and rapid, but it's organized. It's um, it's it's a successful thing. It's got a good feel to it. It's very prosperous. Is it, does that sound like any place you're at right now? Well, it's a it's like my summer gig. Um, mm-hmm. I make money for them. I'm not making the money, but I like my it's a fun job for the summer. And um, it's basically, yeah, we it's a you know you get money. You know, it's like an event, it's an event coordinating right. kind of a job. So yeah, there's an okay. exchange of money, and it's a, a, a kind of a festival kind of a thing every weekend and or every Saturday and. It's fun, and but that's not good. It's only the summertime. That's the only gig for the summer. It doesn't go on after that. Okay, I, I see you working into a place where you're. It's going to be dynamic. It's that same type of thing. But the message that's coming through loud and clear for me is the word authority. You need to be in a position where you've got more authority, more responsibility, mm-hmm. um, and that that is really going to help you thrive. That whereas most people. And I, and I don't know if it's necessarily management or not, but, again, just authority. More authority is coming through. You've got more control over what's going on. Anyway, with the day-to-day operation, at least in your part of that, that work world, and that once you do that, whereas most people might feel real stressed out about that, you're going to thrive in mm-hmm. that type of environment. Does that feel like something that might be right for you, a good match? Yeah, I'm already, like, in this job I have, I mean, I'm, I'm a leader. Oh. You know, for my position, I mean, and of course uh, with the owners and everything. But I mean, yeah, I thrive. <clears throat> I work long hours. I mean, I can thrive. I can work like from ten to twelve, and I mean, or not eight to twelve. I mean, I can work. I I can work pretty hard. Have you had ever operated in your own business before, or have you thought about that at all? Um, I dabble in a little like different healing arts and different things like that. Personal assisting, nanny work. All of those, I would consider that probably my one of my gigs. Um, and there's, again, those have been pretty consistent lately, lately. I'm assuming because I've been raising my vibration and doing some work on myself. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> because it was kind of weird there for a minute. But, um, but um, yeah, those are the, the gigs I've kind of navigated because I – can have the free time that I want and still like uh, basically make the ends meet without having to be committed to to a full nine to five. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a feeling you would do really well in, in a business of your own, but it's something that you may not have even done before, but that it's something you're, you're really passionate about. Like if you had a, a week to do something, you would just do this and you wouldn't even care if you made any money at it because you just love doing it. And I, I get the feeling you're really creative, but on the other side too, I see that, that you can really be, um, you're comfortable with, I don't know if it's particularly numbers or science or anything like that, but you're comfortable with some of the more traditional types of environments. I don't want to say jobs per se because I'm not seeing any particular job title, but just in the workforce. I mean, you can go in there in a business and where everybody else is, uh, you know, they don't want to be there, they're uncomfortable, but, you know, they go along because that's just what we're programmed to do. You know, they're just plodding along. They don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. They don't really care to. You're more um, mindful of wanting to enjoy what you do. And so if you pick something that you just love and are passionate about, if you just kind of push through any fear you might have about, you know, being the – the, the big cheese, you know, the mm-hmm. sole proprietor right. and the income that, that you would do you would do very well. Okay. I like you how you phrase it. Huh? Corrine, what do you get for her? Okay, so here's what I get, Yvette. And I don't know you. I thought you were the Yvette that um when you first came on I thought you were the Yvette that owned a um bakery. 
but you're oh, not, right? No. Okay. <laughs> you're like, no. <laughs> no, no, not like that. Not like that. Because oh, you know, who doesn't love baked goods? <laughs> no, no kidding. So do you know a Sean, Ava? A Sean? Sean. Hmm. Not, not, not right off the bat. Okay. I feel like you did go to college. I knew some Sean's in my lifetime. I just haven't, um, there's no one in no, my No, college. Not a shaman, a college. Wait, wait, wait. You said a Sean? I said Sean, yeah. Yeah, Do I? did I know a Sean? Yeah, or do you know a Sean? I did know one. I mean, it's it's so far back. It was probably like elementary or something, actually. Um, uh, the recent Sean. Oh, my friend's husband is named Sean, but we're not friends anymore. Okay. Um, okay. Did you go to college, Yvette? I did. And nothing that you're doing right now has anything to do with that, does it? Not really. Okay. Do you have black hair, dark hair? I'm brunette. Okay. Uh, did you just recently get new lipstick? Um, I almost did. <laughs> I almost wore <laughs> new lipstick. I almost did. Okay. I was in the store and it was like, you need to spend so much. I'm like, I'll get this. And then I ended up getting something else. Mm-hmm. Have you ever worked for an alcohol company? I haven't, and I'll tell you why, because you need to drink, and I'm not a drinker. I've never been drunk a day in my life. Okay. okay. But I would, I but, thought I was going to do it for this wine stuff, and my friend said, well, you need to kind of need to taste the liquor and all that kind of stuff, and I just, I never drank, so why would I start? So you can't pretend to drink? <laughs> I could. I could pretend. I'm a good pretender. <laughs> you know? I, I see. I see you organizing events for other people, okay? Mm -hmm. Say I have a business, and I do have a business, and I say I want to organize an event to promote my business at blah, 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 right, some place near where I live. And I need someone that can organize this for me. That is very necessary, and I see you doing that. Like, you know the ins and outs of organizing events. You've worked events, and you know that. Did you ever think about doing that, like going out on your own, as Diana said, going out on your own and starting your own, you know, I, I organizer event thing? Like that, you know? Um, I have know, you like, it? what I have done is done organize anything, orga like, I've done organizing for people and, or you know, all that type of thing, and... Um, some of, not, if I've, if I've done events, I've assisted someone in doing an event. Um, you, pro, you, pro, you proposed it in a really nice way. The first person, whatever, what was your name? Di Diana. Diana. I like how you proposed it. Like if I could muster through some of the challenges, I could probably be really successful. Um, I guess sometimes I just don't contemplate that far into anything because I, Things do take a lot of work, and sometimes you just don't want to put the work into it. <laughs> That's to be funny about it. Um, right. But I am interested in – I don't know what to say. I'm looking for – nothing that's not organic because I love doing it. I probably would want to work for someone else. I mean, that's usually what happens. I end up working for someone, and then they let me take over because they don't want to do the job. Um that's been a lot, and but, but but if I get paid worth for the value of what I'm worth, I don't mind doing it. It's that when someone doesn't pay you and they want all the, all of the, you know, the royal extremities without, you know, giving you your value, and I can't do that, and I won't do it. And that's why you should start your own business. Right. Right. Okay. Like yes. you're saying, it takes a lot of work, and you don't. You, sometimes you don't feel like doing. You're doing it anyways, Eva. You're doing right. the work anyways. Why not you take most of the profit? Right. I know. Yeah, and I don't think right. you're taking credit for all of the entrepreneurial things you've done in other jobs. 
You know, so you've got really got a lot of experience in starting up your own business, even if you haven't done one. You've been doing a lot of the things that those people do, but you haven't really viewed it that way, or you don't. Like I said, you don't give yourself credit for what, all that you have done. Right. That that is along those lines of starting up and doing your own business. And that's why other people in their businesses love having you because yeah. you're so competent. And personable that they're they're going to jump on that. You know, right. if they can get someone else to do it, they're going to do that. Right. I mean, Noah will do a good job. I'm not flaky. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Thanks for your also. Input. Also, I see a lot of tall buildings around you, Eva. Uh huh. Uh, I don't know if you're in a city. Um. And the name, your apartment, you live in an apartment? Or? I do. Okay. The rent, has something gone on with the rent recently? Yep, just went up. Okay, yeah. That, that, I was going to say, I should have said that. Um, That's okay. okay, you're so, good. Okay, so Brian, who's Brian? Anyone you know? Uh, Brian. I have a, Brian, Brian, Brian. In my I have a Bryce. Bryce. Okay, no, I was thinking of Brian. Okay, and also your grandfather on your mother's side, is he gone? Yes. Okay. Did he, if I was to ask you, what does your grandfather mean to you, that grandfather? If if I was to ask you that, what would you say to me? On what side of the family? Your mother's father. Um, you know, I know my mother had. I don't. I don't know him. I just maybe I thought about him, which is weird, because I know my mother had interesting relationships with her parents, and I've never mm-hmm. met any of them. So okay. I don't know. Maybe he popped in my head, and I was just wondering. I think he was a um. No, that was my father's. My father's father was a bit of a womanizer. I don't know what my mother, my mother's father was. I think he might have been abusive. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so you never asked her. You know, I, I know my sister knows the full story. So, I, I just know it was, I like, I know it was rough. Okay. Right. See, you know, and I don't, I, I, I think you're like almost thirty. I don't know how old you are. But, I'm, I'm a little bit older uh, than 30. Okay. But that's okay. Um, hey, girl. I love you. Yeah, yeah no, but <laughs> my point is you're young. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Oh, yeah, I'm amazing. Like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but, I mean, the point is this, Yvette, that um, there's something that your mother's father, your grandfather, did that is connected with what you do right now. And, okay, so here's the here's the point here, is that, Yvette, can you talk to your mom about her father and sure, find I, out what happened? I can't. Ask I, well, her. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'll shut up and listen. No, no, I was going to say that you ask her, all. you know, what was he like? What did he do? What were his hobbies? What kind of person was he? And talk to your mom about that. Um, I don't know why, but I feel like he is trying to tell you something. And and that something is that you have a lot of him in your personality. And I, I'm not saying you're abusive or anything oh, like heck that. Oh, no, I'm not close to that. No, 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 no. It's not that. It's the good parts of him, and I'm not sure what those are, but you can ask your mom. You know what I mean? Because I'm yeah. we all have good and bad in us, you know? I, for sure. And uh, Yeah, so ask him, ask her about him and see what he did, what, you know, what his habits were, what, you know, what, what his personality was like, and you're going to get some kind of clue or a message I think she's going to say to you, uh, Yvette, I think your mom's going to say to you, man, like, okay, as she's telling you about your grandfather, her father, she's going to say, you know what, just like you, Yvette, 
She's going to say, just like you, Yvette. There's something you do that is sort of like, um, <clears throat> like, um, hmm, like you're, you, you go ahead no matter what happens. You're like, you pick yourself up and you move on, man. You know, something like that. And she's going to say to you, just like you, Yvette. So let me know what happens with that. I think that's interesting. Um, and I also would urge you, like Diana said, think about having your own business. You know, you I am. Can, uh, I'm going to, I feel like since the universe is here to support me right now, when probably I haven't always felt that, um, I could probably ask that right now and ask for what, you know, what my my company could look like and what company I could have and have it be a success. Right. Yeah. Come up with a name for it in your mind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, and then you you can make it a reality anytime you want. Because, yes, the universe is here to support you. Guess what? It's here to support all of us, but we don't listen. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I just sense the, that you haven't really considered your own business before or your your thoughts have just been that, you couldn't, but not that you weren't capable of doing it, but more just, um, I, don't, I don't know, just something that, that didn't fit with your current framework. But as you start to go forward and if you just think about it a little bit differently every day and kind of think, well, yeah, there might be some things I don't want to do or it might be scary, but, yeah, you know, I really could do my own business and I, I think I'd like it, you know. And you just kind of keep talking to yourself a little bit about that every day. I wouldn't be surprised if you just start already doing it, you know, creating the business, because you've got a very entrepreneurial spirit about you, and you are very personable. You know, people relate to you very well, and you're just going to be, I think you're going to be creating a business and not really realizing it. You know, a couple months down the road, you'll be like, oh, well, here, I'm already doing it. You know, now let's really push it forward and do this. Cool. Right. Yeah, I think so, too. Can I ask another question? Of course. Let's ask about love. Um, want me to preface everything, and you just want to dive in and go for it? Um, well, Diana, what do you think? Well, I if you're not already in a relationship, you've got love all around you. You're definitely ready for one. If you're not in one, because I just I don't see any blockages on that at all at that issue. How about you? Um, well, see, she was going to preface it with a story, but so are you, in fact, interested in somebody right now, Eva? You know, I'm not. I am so not interested in anyone. Um, the guy that I thought, not even like he's cute and he's kind and he's sweet, and there's always this energy between us, like, is there something there? We hung out like a few times, and I see him all the time, and, and I get around him, and I, I, I calibrate in my body, how do I feel around him? I like him as a person, and... He's just, we're probably too heavy together, and um, and he's kind. I know he would be ro- really romantic. I just, and when I think of him, I was just feeling in my body um, where I feel relaxed. And there's moments I feel really relaxed with him, but I felt a little like like something in the upper chest part, just gauging my, how comfortable I feel with him. And I feel comfortable, I just feel, but there's something not right with us yet, if there was going to ever be anything. But I'm not pushing anything, and... But I feel like there is beautiful energy out there. Like guys are kind of flirting with me, and there's like some nice stuff out there. And there's one friend a couple of weeks ago tried to push this guy on me, but I don't work that way. And um, I just know he's out there, and um, I'm just I don't know, I'm ready to claim that person to be in my life. Right. Yeah, I hear you exactly. I hear you, Eva. So the the Sean, I wrote down Sean um, because I was like, she's going to ask about love. And I wrote down the Sean name. So that Sean name might have something to do with this, you know, love that's coming in. Okay. Um, So 
just keep that name in mind, whatever. Not that if his name is not Sean, obviously don't say of hit course. the road, but, of course. but, um, <laughs> but, um, I think he has, um, I'm seeing a picture of him in my mind. I don't know how you feel about this, but he's got like, um, oh man, he's got short hair, like, um, not wicked, wicked short, but short. And it's like brownish, but it's got red highlights. And it's that. sort of like he, it's like, you know, almost like a growing out crew cut. And um, he's muscular. I think he goes to the gym. And um, he's younger than you. He's a little bit younger than you. Um, Sean, who are you? Your name is Sean. Um, I'm asking. So there's something about him to do with food. I don't know if he works at a restaurant or some kind of food thing. Or um, Is there a restaurant that you go into where you live? Like, I, I think that you cook for yourself mainly, but is there a restaurant you go into around where you live? There's a few little hole in the walls. Like, um, there's like a little place I grab a muffin, but there's no guys working in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then I go to a juice bar, but I think most of the guys there are gay. <laughs> um, right. And, you no, know, I do a lot of different activities. I do yoga. I do different, I go to different events. Um so, yeah. Um, the, okay. event at, the event I work at also sells food and different things like that. So. Mm hmm Right. Okay. I, I see somehow an Italian bent to this. Like, uh, you know, in other words, he he's either Italian or he works in an Italian place or some place related to Italians. I don't know what the hell that is, you know? Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're very pretty. You have very pretty eyes. I see you in my mind. And I'm like, she has like really, do you have big eyes? I think so. Okay. Very pretty. Um, and that's why when I saw the lipstick thing, I was like, oh, this really kind of bright, brighter reddish color lipstick that um, I saw you looking at it and like I saw it on your mouth. You know what I mean? It, like mm -hmm. it wasn't, wasn't like a pale color. It was like brighter. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, yeah, I don't, I think that your feelings are probably very correct and that he is coming closer to you you know whoever that might be diana do you pick up on who that might be well i'm not picking up on a, a name or any particular man but the message that's coming through loud and clear for me is yvette bottom line for you is you have to feel the tingle on all levels with this mm -hmm. man because you've got <laughs> this very active uh strong personality so you've got to have someone that can engage you on mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, psychological levels, or, or it's not just not going to be a match for you. You're going to get bored, or you're going to lose interest easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so. It, it, just going forward, because I see you've got, like I said, you're ready. You've got all this love around you, and I don't see any blocks coming to you in that regard regarding relationship. But uh, there are going to be some guys out there that are just, they're wonderful. They're going to treat you really well. There are some that are going to be very smart or they've got similar interests in yours, and that's really going to turn you on. But you, like I said, you've got to feel the tingle on all the levels to have. Yeah, have and it's hard. It's hard to get. To, yeah, it's difficult to, uh, to you know, uh, to uh, to have that, to find that, because I'm not just like, I don't, even though a guy's good looking and hot and sex, you know, I that doesn't that's not enough. And right. I mean, of course, I mean, we all want a little eye candy. I'm not talking like I freaking don't want no dumb kin, you know. But you want a little bit of something that's appealing to the eye, but you also want a beautiful soul and you know, someone with intelligence and you know the whole nine. I mean, I mean, we all work on ourselves. And we all strive to you know become better versions of ourselves. I get the feeling too. You you know 
what it is you want, whether it's the, the feeling or you see someone in your mind, you know, kind of a, a physical image. I'm not sure what it is, but you've, you've got in your mind kind of what you want. So when you meet that person, I don't think it's going to take you very long to kind of realize, okay, I do feel that tingle on all, of, all levels. You know, what was, what was I questioning before? This is the one. Right, you know, right. Type of thing. So I, I would just be patient with it and, you know, enjoy the ride in the meantime because, mm-hmm. like I said, I see a number of um, nice gentlemen. I mean, really okay. nice, nice men that you're going to have some fun with. Just, you know, take your time with it and have fun because you you lead a very full life. Mm-hmm. And, and I see that just the more people you encounter, it's just going to help you for when you do meet up with your your best match. It, it's just going to help you build on that relationship. Mm-hmm. With everything you get when as you're dating now. Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, I sense? also feel. Uh, I'm sorry, D- Diana. Go ahead. Oh, I just did that make sense, or did you have any question on what I just said? No, it makes perfect sense. Okay. Perfect okay. Sense. Go ahead, Corinne. Didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, that's okay. You didn't cut me off. I cut you off. So, <laughs> as usual. Anyways, Yvette, is there like some sort of botanical garden thing that you like or some something to do with planting flowers or flowers? That's interesting because there is a garden sometimes I go to. I haven't gone there in a while, but it's a garden I would go to meditate at. And I also have a really good friend. He's gay, but he's a gardener. He's like really highly, you know, he does um, a lot of uh, – a landscaper and does beautiful gardening and he has a really beautiful place and uh sometimes I go out there and hang out but as far as um my mother was is uh has a green thumb but uh I've never okay. my sister has a green thumb I don't have anywhere to right. plant anything so I never really dabbled into that yet right but I think that will come in your future, and I think that he, the guy that you're going to be with, has something to do with that as well. Interesting. Um, yeah. I love, like you just said, brains. It's like brains turn me on. You know, if the guy doesn't have brains, I, I could give a crap. You know what I mean? Um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we didn't, We kind of need to talk, and someone that's communicative, and, and like someone that's able to help, you know, pro- problem solve, and someone to help you. You know, if you have a wall up, someone able to talk you off, you know, talk you down off your ledge, you know, vice versa. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I hear that. Believe me, sister. <laughs> um, so. Uh, I love it. But so, so you are okay. I mean, obviously you're very okay. You're very pretty. You have it going on and um, you're, you're fine, Eva, you know, and. I think that your work thing is going to, you know, I hope that you take our advice tonight, what we what we told you about it, because I really believe you could have this business. And I'm seeing like a two-word title to your business. You know what I mean? Um, and you know what, Yvette? It's like I'm thinking I need an event coordinator. I need to hire an event coordinator for my business. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. So, I mean, I'm saying there, there's a definite need for it, you know? Right, right. Well, and I get the feeling that some businesses might, large businesses might contract with you mm-hmm. just because it would be not only are you good and you can get things done quickly for them, but they wouldn't have to pay. They, they might pay you more of, of a fee, but they're not going to have to pay you the benefits and things. You know what I mean? So that's right. why a lot of companies go with consultants. And for some reason I just see big companies mm-hmm. kind of, welcoming that instead of, you know, hiring a staff of people to do that because you can do what, you know, five people can do, some right. companies. So. Um, yeah. Can I ask one more question? Go ahead. My spiritual development. I've been doing all kind of cool stuff and um, meditating and, you know, doing some healing work, clearing work and, some, like some really cool, interesting things, and I just wanted to. I don't know what I'm asking. Like we all are. I mean, on our journey to have more intuition and more guidance, more divine guidance, and uh, I guess what, how does that look? And all the stuff, stuff I've been dabbling in. 
Well, I get you're already, you're kind of already answered your question. You're already, I see you already doing a lot of things that feel right for you, and I just see you, it, it's a steady pace, a steady flow. I don't see you making, like, necessarily baby steps or big jumps. I just see you making the steady growth mm-hmm. in your spiritual development, your psychic development, and every day it may be a little bit different in terms of some of the things you do, but if you, if there's one thing that you like to do, there, there would be some benefit in picking one thing that's kind of a ritual, whether that's, you know, meditating 15 minutes every morning or taking a walk or wh- whatever feels right to you. If there's one thing that you do normally like to do every day, you might want to continue to do that and maybe do it at the same time of day. I see that as kind of taking everything else that you're doing, because you're doing a number of different things for this right now. I see that kind of uh, corralling it all and, and just kind of giving it a little bit more of a, a foundation for you. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. I was going to say, do you meditate, Eva? Every day. Okay, good. 90, let's just say, let's say 90%, like give or take. Like last week, actually, I can only do one time, one day and I do my own thing, like clearing and stuff at night, but mostly every day. Good. Good for you. Good for you. Because you know what? A lot of people are like, I, you know, I can't meditate. But when you take the time out to do that, as you have been, that really matters. Because you get in touch with your higher self and the message is coming down from your higher self. And you get in touch with all of the rest of the spiritual realm, which are trying to lead you in the right direction. So, I mean, that's fantastic that you do that yeah yep. plus you're clearing out a lot of the crap from the physical world so that you yeah, have that connection. yeah yeah sometimes i get so out there i was like where the heck did i go i mean it's really interesting sometimes every time it's a unique experience are you writing down some of those experiences that are, are memorable for you yeah I probably need to start um I'm getting that, that it, it's not only going to help you, but it's going to help you help other people as you move forward. Right, right. Yeah, I sometimes I don't even know where I went. I mean, it's just so out there, and I can't even. And that's okay. Okay. That's, oh yeah, I I know what you're talking about, and it's uh, the first couple times I did that, I, I was a little frightened, and I thought, well, you're okay, and how do you feel now? And I felt actually kind of. Uh, exhilarated usually you know because it was kind of a freeing thing to experience something that was so out there and like and when your head nods a lot you know mm-hmm. your head jerks back my head does a lot of jerking and a lot of tweaking and like you're just moving and you're just like yeah that's awesome yeah yeah just so, keep it up Thank you Keep so doing much. what you're doing. You're going to discover new things, too, but you've got uh, quite a bit of tools that you're already using. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, ladies, yeah. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for calling, Yvette. Cool. So how can I get a hold of you? What are you guys on Facebook? What's the deal? What are you guys on? You, uh, well, you can get a you can get a hold of Diana. She's at www.psychicfrontier.com, and that's in the chat, actually. Cool. Uh, it's on the show page, psychicfrontier.com. And I'm just Kareem DeWinter, and you can look me up on Facebook. There's there's only – I think there's only one Kareem DeWinter. <laughs> <laughs> that's with a C, Kareem? Yes, Corrine, C O R R I N E, and De Winter, capital D E, capital W I N T E R. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, are you in Harvard you start... University? Yes. Oh, cool. And My... if that... If you start doing event coordination, please let me know because I need one. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you go? Where do you live? I live in Massachusetts. Oh, cool. Wow. 
<laughs> You're in, where are you, Chicago? California. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. That's, that's far, but you can still help me, you know? Wow, I, that would be exciting. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, right. thank you so much. You're welcome. You ladies did an amazing job. Oh, thanks. Okay, I'll I'm looking check forward to chatting you. with you again. <laughs> thank you. I hope you do. I will. I'm going to listen. Thank you so much. Okay. Have a good thank night. You. Thank you. All right. Bye. Okay. So there's um, – she was great. Um, I love meeting awakened people, Diana, as I said previously, you know. And oh, it's like – I love that these people are connecting and they're trying to connect and they're curious and they're asking questions. I love that. Um, we have another woman in the chat, Shirley Rigby. She's from the UK. And um, I think she's here because she thought that Chris was going to be here, but I said, no, it's it's you and I. So um, anyways, if she would like to call in, I told her she can just unmute her microphone here in the chat and um, she could talk to us. So Shirley, if you are called in uh, on the platform here, you can just unmute yourself and say hello and we'll know you're there. So but we're glad you're here. So um yeah, so that was good. Diana, you did phenomenal. Oh, well, thank you. So did you. I was just going to say we need to tag team again. This has been fun. Wait. Yeah. Do we do we hear a voice? Whoops. <laughs> I heard a beep. I heard a, voice. Uh, I heard a beep, and then I heard a voice, and she must have. Shirley, if that was you, please do it again. So. <laughs> She said it's very late for her there. She's, in, of course, in the U.K., and she says it's very late, but it's 5 a.m., 5.14 a.m. there. Uh, but she's been up since 3.30. So, anyways, hopefully she'll call back. So, um, can I ask you? Yes, we could hear you, Shirley, but you have to do it again because we can't hear you now. We could hear you before, though. So, can you try it again, please? I had a friend in school named Kathy Rigby, and um, she passed away a couple of years ago, and I often think about her, um, not to talk about that right now with Shirley, but I mean, with that last name, I think about Kathy. Okay, so Shirley, if you can reconnect your mic. And speak, we could hear you pretty good, but we are both talking, so we 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 didn't respond right away. I apologize, Shirley. Okay, she says, don't worry, I need to work it out how to use the mic. So we know that you just unmute yourself on the mic. I did just press the button, but it's pulling up other options. Okay, so let me see. The mic. Okay, so... See the headphones, Shirley. If you see the headphones, you just press on that, and it'll give you a few options saying, do you hear your own voice? You know, do you, you know, does this make sense? Just go through those options because you obviously did it already, so you can do that again to get on. I'm sorry, Diana. I didn't even ask you, do you have to go? It's 1216, and you certainly um, no, saved I the whole show. Some more time, I, if anyone still here that that wants a reading i want to do that for them is, there okay. is this working is this working yes yes, yes we can Yay. we can hear you Charlotte. yeah Yay. <laughs> landed how are you doing shirley yes i'm very well i woke up really early at about three o'clock in the morning and um I've washed the dishes, <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh, it's now it's now sort of just gone five. So I've uh, I've only very very recently come across your the radio show through um, 
I don't know, just searching podcasts. And uh, and for the last couple of weeks, I've listened to quite a few, you know, different people, and and it's a really really nice radio show. I I really appreciate all your honesty. You're all very down to earth. You're very um, cutting through the bullshit. You know what I mean? Right. And, exactly. Um, yeah, and it, it's 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 very refreshing, and so. Um, I'm learning a lot in my past, so I've obviously come across you for some for some reason. And so I thought I'd try to go online and, and check you all out, but I see that all your shows are very late, which is very early here. So it's a good place to hang out when I wake up really early in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So Diana is a, Diana so is a kind word, Shirley. That's very nice. Thank you. Very nice. So Diana's a fantastic reader. If you would like to ask a question, Shirley. Um. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm going to be moving soon, so I I don't know if there's anything that you can uh, pick up on that at all. Must I keep my phone, my microphone unmuted or muted? I'm sorry, what did you say? What did, did you I, say? Should I keep my uh, the microphone sort of unmuted like this? Yes, please. Please, so okay. you can respond to what Diana tells you. Okay. So, okay. yes, I'm, I'm, I'm moving soon, so I just wanted to maybe a little bit of input, input. I don't know if that's too vague for you. Well, the first thing that came through as you were talking was... Uh, the, if there's anything else you can get rid of, discard, give away, sell, however you want to get rid of it, that that you will be lighter, not only in the move, but but once you get there too. Have have you already cleared out a lot of things in preparation for this particular move? Uh, yeah, we've done a lot of uh, decluttering already. So I think what we what we've got now left in the house is what we take with us. You know. Okay. Yeah, that was the main thing I was getting. Just if there was anything else that that you didn't think you would actually use again or need it again, that 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 would help. Um, but I don't think it was associated so much with physical things as much as more kind of emotional things that that might help you just kind of feel a little lighter to get rid of certain mm-hmm. things. Um, I get the feeling it's going to be rather smooth. Has this been planned out for quite a while now? You've got things set up? Because I just see you being a very organized person. I get the feeling you've got a lot of things already set up. Is that the case? Well, we had to put six months leave in before we could leave this um, house. Mm-hmm. And basically we just kind of said we'll just go wherever the wind blows. So we've been looking at properties to rent and they've uh, come and gone because it wasn't time for us to move anyway but we're just sort of moving where it feels right so it's been very much a, a, a sense of trust you know sort of letting go and just trusting that something's going to right is going to come along our path well I have a so, feeling that's going to work for you because uh, wherever you land I, I just see you feeling very comfortable very much at peace do you have a particular place in mind right now or do you know where you're going now well, it was literally yesterday it came by surprise that well, we saw a house that's out in the middle of nowhere uh, in the country because that's really where we want to be, sort of connect back to nature and be back in the country. So we uh, literally saw a house come up for rent yesterday um, and um, sort of gone through all the if it meets all the needs that we need, you know. And well, um, I, I, I see a white building, and I don't know if it's a house per se. It's it's very large, and there's uh, what looks to be kind of a tower on it. So it might have been an old, previously a church or a school um, in the area. Again, I'm not sure if that's a place where you're moving, but I get the feeling it's going to be um, something you will see regularly or something you're drawn to. Does that sound like anything you've already seen in that area? 
Well, I live right next to a huge cathedral. <laughs> this isn't a cathedral. It's more, um, it looks more like either a, a country school or a country, a small country church. I mean, it's it's bigger than a house a little bit, but it's it's not huge. And there's just one, the tower is maybe, uh, it looks a little bit larger than, than a, a large chimney. It's it's not huge, but but it's just a plain white, very um, new, clean paint, and I see some hills around it, and it's just got a very peaceful feeling in the area. Maybe yeah. it's a community center. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe there is a little chapel or something nearby. I've never been to this area. I literally, we were looking at it last night on Google, you know, trying to look at the street view and the aerial view and sort of see what it looks around, you know, the surroundings around. So maybe there is something nearby. Well, yeah, and I'm not I, sure why it's important. You, if you're going to meet someone there that, you know, might be a, a good friend or a connection in some other way, but for some reason that, that building is is jumping out at me. How about you, Corinne? What are types of images or impressions are you getting? Well, I hear Coventry Gardens, and I don't know what that has to do with anything. But before you said that you wanted to connect with nature, I saw lots of nature around the place. And Coventry, where's Coventry from you, uh, Shirley? Oh, okay. No, I don't know. I know. I think Coventry is like a... Uh, a county somewhere further away, but maybe there's a house or gardens that are called Coventry Gardens. So maybe I should have a look in Google Maps and see around, you know, the place. Right. Also, are you married, Shirley? Sure am. Okay. Does your husband have problems with blood pressure? Um... No, not that I know of. Okay, good. I'm not saying that he does. I'm just <clears throat> asking. So don't feel that that's a premonition or anything, you know? Okay, yeah, yeah. But I do think that you guys will find that house of, you know, where where it's like, oh, my God, it's like peaceful and beautiful, you know, to rent. A very peaceful well, feel. Excuse me, Corinne. Mm -hmm. It's interesting ahead, because Dad. I... Sorry. No, go ahead, Shirley. It's quite interesting because yesterday uh, I quickly phoned the estate agent and she said that there were another couple looking at this house, but they're tied in at the moment to a rent that also is up until October, just the same as ours. So... We sort of feel like we want to go see it and try and get in there before they do, you know, because it's sticking all over our boxes, you know. All right. Do you think that they will, Diana? Yeah. I have a strong feeling that the one you want now, the one that just came up, that you will get it, but you've just got to take action, and then when you get there, it, examine everything and really trust your intuition, how you feel in, in every room and, and outside around the area to make sure it, it feels as good as what it looks on paper. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. yeah. We're trying to be we're trying to be honest with the whole situation, you know, not get caught up by, and this is with any house that you look up, it's very easy to get caught up with maybe how big the rooms are or, you know, other kind of, paraphernalia but really it's about keeping grounded and making sure that you're being honest with yourself truthful with what your needs are and do you know do you know where I'm coming from yes yeah. yes and I have a strong feeling there will be at least two other options coming up for you guys to check out so that's why I think the intuition thing is coming through trust you know how you feel when you go to these places just to find the right one but that you're that this one that just came up it looks and feels really good but I don't think it's going to be the only one so just you know okay. it, I I don't know it you might land there though because it just it feels so good and I think you're going to connect with it when you when you really get to examine it 
but uh, I think you're doing a great job so far of just, you know, being open with it. I think that's what's opening up more options for you than maybe other people out there because you went into this whole thing being open like that. Right, right, yeah. Right, great. I agree with that. So, Shirley, I just want to ask you one more thing, please. Um, so, is there someone in your in your family or a relative that, you know, or somebody you know named Ed, Edward? No, I don't know any Edward. Okay. I feel like... I'm sorry, I'm practicing to be a medium, uh, okay. Shirley. Yeah. So um, um, I feel like it, it is a father figure, some some father figure of yours coming forward. And I don't know if your father has passed or not. No, no. Oh, that's what good. Else you, what else do you pick up, Corinne? Okay, so... I'm looking behind you and I see an older man and a woman, an older woman. Um, And it's your your mother, I think. Is it your mother? He's not passed. Okay. All right. Then it's not her. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You're very lucky, Shirley. Surely you're very lucky to have both your parents alive. <laughs> okay. Um, I've not experienced a lot of death in my life, to be honest. Okay. Okay. That's good. I mean, well, it's good, you know, uh, mm-hmm. in, 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 many, in many ways it's good. Um, okay. So there was a woman, though, that was connected to you somehow that passed when she was about 60. Um See, she's got short hair, short brown hair, um, and she's wearing, like, a flowery top, and she knew your mother somehow. Um, Oh, my God. I want to say she was a teacher or something. Does this sound familiar at all to you? No. Okay. Okay. But but that's only because a lot of my family were overseas, so I wasn't um, very disjointed. So I'm not very close to my family, if you know what I mean, like um, distant, you know, distant family, like my mother's cousins or my right. real father's sister and stuff like that. So, I, I, yeah, I don't know them very well, you see. Okay, okay. Um... Yeah, I feel like she was an aunt or something, Shirley. I don't know what she was to you, but she was something family related to you. Um, but she's showing me that she was very um, orderly, like she put everything in order and she had everything together. I think she she died kind of young, like I said, in her in her 50, late 50s early 60s uh she was never married and um i don't know if that sounds like one of your aunts or not i don't i don't know do you you have aunts do you not or do you uh just um not through my mother's side i think uh, my yeah my father had a my real father had a sister he mm-hmm. she died he probably died at around that age, maybe even a bit earlier. Um, but okay. I don't know if she's a teacher or not. She's also, in my mind, she's stacking up boxes, which means that you, to me, you are very orderly also. Like that <laughs> you, get things, you get things done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but she's, I, I think she's saying to me also, Shirley, that you, showing you or her stacking up boxes, but also saying, 
but she doesn't forget to do the, you know, to make the meals. And she does all this other stuff that's like amazing. Is that true? Uh, yeah. When, when push comes to shove. <laughs> <laughs> now this is interesting. I keep hearing the name Nancy in my head over and over. Is that anybody you know or have known before? No, I don't know Nancy. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what this woman's name is, but she's just telling me that you do everything kind of like she did, you know, like orderly, but you get, you get this, you get this hard work done, but you're also like, oh, I can also make the cake or the pie and it's no problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have a son, um, Shirley? Yeah. Okay. Um, he wasn't in the military, was he? No, he's he's young still. Okay, is he twelve? No, he he's gonna turn seventeen at the end of the year. Okay, okay. Does he want to go in the military? Did he ever say anything about that? Um, I'm not sure because he he doesn't live with me anymore, and he's sort of. He's distanced himself from me, so I don't really know what's going on with him at the moment. Okay. Okay, I understand. Um, okay. Um, all right, so let's put him aside for a second. Um, he wanted to fly planes. He was very much into planes when he was younger, and I think he really like wanted to be you know, RA or... RAF or plane flying, but I don't know if that's all gone to the wayside now. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Um, he wants to hear from you, though. Do you know that? Uh, no, I don't, because he doesn't make any indication of wanting to know me. And then when I make contact with him, he doesn't. He's, he's not very responsive, and it's very hurtful, so I, ha I have to back up off from it all. Right. I understand, but you know what? I'm just saying, and you don't have to listen to me at all, but I'm saying reach out to him nonetheless, okay? Yeah. Because that does matter to him. Well, occasionally I, I have just, like, Facebooked him or texted him and just said that I love him very much. And that I'm always there for him, you know? Right, right. Just, just to let him know, even even if he doesn't, just to let him know that I am there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's exactly what I'm saying. Even if he doesn't respond, he knows that you did this, that you are thinking about him and that you love him. And he knows this inside, but you have to keep, doing that anyways regardless at least every couple of weeks um his father um Corrine, forgive me he, for interrupting but my phone's chirping so you may lose me fairly soon if you i'm not hanging up on you the phone's about to die though so i just want to give you a heads up okay. all right but diana give shirley the rest of the reading before you you lose connection and any other stuff you might have for her um, well, the main thing I'm picking up is just the move, that that's, that's a lot on your mind right now. Um, yeah, I'm getting that your son uh, is, he's, he's sometimes a man of few words, but it, there's, I definitely feel a strong emotional tie there between the two of you, but a lot of times things are left unspoken, which isn't a good or bad thing, just... Um, like Corrine said, I'm kind of getting he likes when you reach out to him. He may not respond back right away, but he definitely appreciates it because of that connection. That your connection doesn't have to be very um, outward or, or vocal, but it's still a, a good connection just to maintain it. Yeah, because right. we used to be really, really close. I was a single mother, and we were incredibly close, and then then... I sort of moved, and then he just rejected me, basically. So it's all, it's all just sort of shattered from there on, if you know what I mean. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, for now it's shattered, Shirley, but it's not always going to be this way. This is temporary. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so do, Shirley, do you have blonde hair? No. Okay. I get with your son, it's a lot of it is baby steps, but it is going to come together. It's just you have to be patient and, again, do the work even if it is in the, the small pieces, the baby steps. That'll be fine. Yeah, I think he'll grow out of it, hopefully. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. He just needs some time and, and growing up to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just hope he's, he's safe, you know, he keeps safe. Yeah, I see your ex-husband now, or I don't even know if he was your husband, but I see he's he's with his dad. Is that right? His his dad passed away um, a couple of months ago. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. Um. So who is he living with now? Um. I, I, I don't know if he's with family. Sorry, I know that sounds really horrible, but I don't know if he's with family or if he's with a foster home or... I know he's being looked after and cared for because this country is very good like that, you know. Um, they're mm. trying to keep him where he is so that he can finish the schooling and that there's as much stability in his life. Um, I'm just not 100% sure who who he's living with at the moment. I know that sounds really bad, not to know what's going on. But um, I, w I just wasn't involved in any of it either. And, um, yeah. Right. But I know he's safe and um, he's, gonna, he's going to start in college. So I think he's... he's right, right, right. Uh, and, I, and I know kids at a certain age here, they'll get what's called assisted uh, or like supported living. So um, at a certain age, they'll find them a flat and they get money and they, they get sort of support all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, right. Uh, well, I mean, I think it's imperative that you keep reaching out to him. And you let him know that you want to be a part of his life and you still love him so much. It's just, it's important. And I, I think that you're doing that, but I'm just stressing that once again. Um, and um, so his father, though, surely, was his father very kind of hard to deal with? Yeah, he, he wasn't a very nice person. Mm, mm-hmm. He had a very hard yeah, yeah. life. Mm. Right, right. And I get he was, he was tough. Go ahead. Sorry? No, go ahead, Shirley. He was very vindic vindictive. Yeah. A lot of bitterness. Yes, yeah. But I think I made I think I made my peace with him when he when he when he passed over because it was it was really strange he passed over or you know I heard I heard a, I heard about it through the grapevine and it was like um, I just wanted to I asked him I said I just want to know that you're okay and you're at peace now because I think he had really bad cancer when he when he passed over and I think he suffered quite a, a lot in in the last few days. And um, right. and I and I I just said to him I just you know I forgive you for everything and whatever happened is because it needed to happen between us both and I hope that you found peace over on the other side and just let me know if that you're okay so I I said to him I give give me a key word that you'll be okay so there was this big um, it was a big gripe with Johnson and Johnson, who he tried to take to court, you know, because he he said that they stole some sort of design of his. So, as a joke, because it was like a bit of a joke, I said, if if you are there, um, 
tell me the word Johnson or let me see if it's the word Johnson. And that day, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. That day I was uh, driving to pottery class and I thought, well, I never see Johnson Johnson vans anywhere or I'm not going to the shops. I'm just driving out to the country to go do some pottery. So, you know, the chances of seeing something like that or hearing something like that is quite minimal, really, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so I get to pottery class and I was busy making this plate where the design on the plate is where one day I happened to drop a box of cotton buds on the floor and they made a really nice pattern and I took a photograph of it and I decided to put that design on the plate because it almost looks a bit tribal like anyway so I was in the class and I was busy painting my plate and getting it ready to get fired and some people came to visit the pottery class from overseas and uh, they were looking around at everybody's uh, work that they were doing and they came up to my plate and they went oh that looks nice and I was busy telling this lady she was like from Argentina or somewhere that this happened to be like cotton buds you know that I that I saw and I took a photograph of it and I decided to put it on this plate and then the guy behind me said oh you should really be working for Johnson and Johnson oh so I oh turned around God. and I went, what did you say? And he went, yeah, you should be, you should be like promoting Johnson & Johnson. And I tell you what, I just laughed. And he probably didn't understand why I was laughing. But I thought, wow, in a million years, would you ever have thought of that, you know? Right. And so right. for me, that was confirmation for me that he was saying, I'm okay you know, I'm on the other side, I'm in peace now, and, you know, and whatever. So, yeah, that was a, a very interesting oh experience. Yeah, that's amazing. That's excellent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, that's yeah. Ex so, yeah, I was going to say, the symbols on your plate, uh, you know, in your pottery, it's like you put these symbols on there, and half of them you don't know what it means, but they do, they have this ancient meaning, surely. Um, uh, and that's why people are attracted to them. So I think this is awesome that you're doing this work, that you're doing pottery, and that you have uh, this going on, that you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, because I see like a circle, 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 like a, a spiral. Uh, design uh, on on one of your plates or, or a bunch of spiral designs and um, that means something. I can't tell you off the top of my head what it means, but it's like these symbols that you use do have meaning and I don't know if you know that or not. Well, I'll, te I'll tell you something. Last year I started, I started painting and basically... Uh, what's been happening is that either in my meditation I'm getting a small little vision of some design or in my dreams. So I've started painting them on big canvases and um, and I'm, I'm just churning them out and most of them just look like like symbols like that. It almost looks like codes or activation codes or they just and some of them look a bit like crop circles or they just all weird shapes. And um, I, get, I I don't know, can I get one on the, on the, can I go on a webcam? Does that work? Yes, if you put yourself on, it works, yeah. Let me have a look. Let's see what it's picking up. See the camera at the top. Thing. You just have to press that. Right, okay. So can you see my face? Not at the moment. Um, oh, right. Let me start sharing. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting to your time. Oh, here it's you great. are. Oh, my God, okay. there you are. Look Hello. at you. Look at you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to walk over to my latest painting, okay? 
and I'm going to show you what I what I've just what I've painted. Hang on a minute. Right. So. Mhm. Mm wow. So that's got like it's all like a big chip. Yes, it is. It's and a in map. my. It, oh yeah, maybe even a map. Well, they in the dream they told me that they they gave this to me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that is so, cool. So yeah, so I've been um, either on my pottery or on or on on canvas. I've just been painting. I feel like I, I feel like I have to get it out. I have to yeah. get these symbols out, or I have to get uh, this art out. And I don't know. If it's just for people to see whether it activates something or what. I think it. You know what? Uh, if Surely, I feel like it is going to activate something. It's like, you know, it, it, listen, this is stuff you dream about, is it not? Does this come in your dreams? comes in my dreams or visions or during meditation. It's like a vision. Mm-hmm. These things matter. They are important. You know, as as much as, like, somebody might say, oh, it's just your dream. It's just what you imagine. No, this stuff matters. And yes, get it out there, indeed. Yeah, okay. I'm really enjoying doing that at the moment. It's giving me a lot of joy. Good, good. Because, you know, you're spreading the wealth, so to speak. You're spreading your knowledge. And that's what we need right now on Earth. You know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, you're not what I think you look like. Like, I didn't picture yeah. you at all. I pictured you with, like, blonde hair. And um, <laughs> I knew you were pretty. You are very pretty. But I, uh, I pictured you with blonde hair. Did you ever have blonde hair? No, I only once ever dyed it. It looked terrible. <laughs> I look so washed out. <laughs> no, no. You look very, very pretty. You are very pretty. So can I, I just, you know, surely forgive me, but I am practicing like a practicing medium. So That's I just want to say, okay, thank you. Um, I just want to say, um, shit. Um, hold on. I see your son, though. I think your son looks like you. But he's very important. That's why I'm, I, I was stressing that you need to reach out to him at least a, every every couple of weeks, not just a few times a month. You know what I mean? Oh, thanks, Diana. <laughs> Diana pictured you as a blonde, too. <laughs> well, maybe in the future, surely, you'll have blonde hair. <laughs> So, is your birthday in May? No, it's in June. Okay. Are you a Gemini? A Gemini rising. Okay. Okay. No, sorry, no. Gemini moon. No, my birthday was June the 30th. Okay. Okay. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um... And what happened, did something important happen to you in a September of past, if you know? September. No, not that I know of. I think that, you know, the house thing looks like it might, because I said September and then I'm like, wait a minute. I think the house thing is going to happen in September. Would that make sense? Well, we need to be out of here by October the 13th. Um, um, in September, my stepson will start university. So it's all happening around that time. The change, you know? Right, right. 
Um, check out the Coventry Gardens thing. I don't know what the hell that means, but I'm check sure. that out. Yeah, Coventry yeah. Gardens. Hmm. I don't even know if there is such a thing, but I saw gardens and Coventry in the word Coventry. I don't know what that means, but that could be something. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'd like to ask. I'd like to ask something, and maybe you can pick up on it. Last night I woke up with cigarette smoke under my nose, and mm -hmm. so there was there was obviously a spirit around me. Diana, do you know who that could have been? I'm thinking. Hold on. Okay, so um, it was just clear cigarette smoke. It wasn't cigar smoke, right? Not cigar smoke. It was just cigarette smoke. Yeah. Okay. Did you, I'm just going to ask you, did you have a lover in the past who used to smoke a lot? Well, that would be... That would be um, the, my, the the ex, my son's father. Okay. Johnson and Johnson guy. <laughs> You're right, 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 right. Yeah, um, he, he smoked terribly. Okay. Um, I wonder whether uh, he. Go ahead. I wonder whether he's still. A, it hangs around me, you know. Yeah, he does. Um, so, can can you tell me his name? Because this will help me further to tune in to him. His name was Roy Campbell. Willie? Yeah, Roy Campbell. Okay, okay, thank you. He's saying that there was a lot of important things that happened between you, especially your son, and um, he drank too much, or he did he drink? No, he didn't touch alcohol. He, he smoked oh, wow. a lot of okay. mm. Ah, I know he drank a lot. His parents, both alcoholics. Okay, okay. Um, there was something that he was trying to compensate for that he, that happened to him in his, his younger years that he couldn't work out, but that's what his life played out like. It's like he, he was trying to, to compensate for the lack of, of something. Uh, it might have been love and his past. And he could not, he could not get past that. Um, uh, hold on. Um, oh, shit. My father, he was, was he named after his father? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, Doing really well, Father, I'll give you some. I'll give you some feedback on that in a minute. Okay. Um, he's saying there was a lot of stuff that happened to him in his youth that he didn't really share with anybody, and um, shit, a lot of it had to do with his dad. Um, but I'm here for my son. I'm here for my son. I'm watching my son. Um, she's never gonna forget you. I'm 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 talking to him right now. She's not gonna forget you. He's afraid you're gonna forget him, and you're gonna dismiss him. She's not. Now, did he? Don't tell me when he died, but I'm gonna try to guess. Okay, Shirley, did he die about? Wait, you just told me when he died. You said he died a month ago, correct? No. <laughs> Shit. 
I, I saw four years, but when did you tell me he died? Well, I think he died in February. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. Hold on. Did he like to, um, Shirley, did he like to drive cars very fast? He like what? To drive cars very fast? No. I think that's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see somebody really putting the pedal to the metal there. Yeah, that's um, me. <laughs> Not him. Okay. Yeah. All right, so maybe, you know, think about that and, and maybe not do that so much. <laughs> um, no, I've got to be careful. Sometimes I feel like, um, you know what it is? It's to do with speed, isn't it? And, and, um, and like, the, the, the fastness of your vibration, it's almost like you feel like, I should really should just be teleporting myself there straight away. So you sort of act it out <laughs> in your car. Totally. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> okay. Um he's got a sister? Did he have a sister? Uh yes. Okay. Um Um One of I don't know if he had two sisters, but one of the sisters is upset about like really upset about his passing. And he wants, he's, he says he's trying to contact her, trying to say he's okay, but she's not getting it. I don't know what she's like. I see her, actually, I see her as a blonde too. Um, I don't know if she's got straight blonde hair. I don't know if you know what she looks like. But um, I also hear the name Susan. Um, do you know his sister? Um, he, he's got quite a large family, yeah. He's got a brother and, you know, three or four sisters or something. I think one of them okay. is called Susie. Mm. Okay. She's very upset. Um, and he sh he's showing me in connection with her, like a, um, not a crossword puzzle, but a, um, you know, what is that, Sudoku, Sudoku, or I don't even know how you say it, but something yeah. like that, that they, that they did, or, or something that she would know if he said, hey, I'm trying to connect with you, like to, to give proof that he's connecting, what else is she giving? He's giving the number um, 13 uh, also in connection with that. I don't know what that means. Um, and, um, shit. Um, mama, something about the mother, um, mama, um, some name with an E name, uh, connected with them, um, E. Um, a weird name. It's not like a usual name. It's not like no. Ellen or Ellen or Albert or something. It's something else. Um, okay. So anyways, all right, let's leave her aside for a second. So I'm asking him, why is he hanging around you? Cause I'm pretty sure he is. Um, <clears throat> he says, I want her to know how much I loved her. Did he love you? I mean, really, did you feel like he loved you when he died? Uh, maybe not when he died. I think when we first met, we were in love, you know, like one is. But he but still thought about you when he passed. Probably. I do feel we have a very strong karmic uh, tie together. I felt I felt like we came together purely to make my son, you know? Mm-hmm. Right, right. Do you guys go to the beach? 
a lot or sometimes like three times? I'm trying to think. I don't I don't think we ever went to the beach, no. Hmm. Okay. Did he have a friend, Shirley, named Reggie? Reg? Reggie? No, I've, no, I've got a friend called Reg. Okay. And do you remember when his birthday was? Don't tell me, but do you remember when his birthday was? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. Was it in March? What's that? No, it wasn't, no. Okay. Who? Who's that? Um, Roy, you mean? Yeah. No, his isn't in March. Okay, thank you. February? No. no. Did anything happen in February that was important? I see February 11th. I don't know why. Um. No, not that I can think of. I mean, he passed away in February. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and what was the date in February that he passed away? Do you remember? It was the 23rd or something. Okay, okay, thank you. Did he work in a... I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go on. Did he work in a steel factory? Something about a steel factory? Um, not, not the time that I knew him, he was, he was pretty much unemployed most of his life. He might have been in a steel factory when he was much younger for a short time. Okay. Okay. So... I'm going to ask you, did Willie, was he like not six feet, but a little bit under six feet, and he had brown hair, and it was short, and he had like uh, facial hair, kind of like a, like a goatee type thing going on? No, no, not at all. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's who I see in my mind. I don't know why. I think I'm thinking of Dan on the show earlier. Um, Alan? Is there an Alan connected with him? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm just seeing him like having fun with with beach balls and stuff like that. I don't know why, but that's why I thought you guys went to the ocean together. Um, <laughs> Shirley, I'm only practicing. That's fine. That's no, it's good. I think it's good just to say everything you can because I think if I practice, you just have to even if it's all getting crossed up with other people or whatever, you just have to. Do it anyway, don't you? Mm-hmm. Okay, so is there any other things that you want to say? You, you wanted to tell me about something earlier, right? Yeah, I just wanted to give you some feedback on um, on what you were uh, saying about he was trying to compensate for the lack of love in his life. Uh, his, right. his past 
his parents had abandoned the whole family and it was actually in the news um, or in the newspaper that they had abandoned about the, all six kids and all six kids ended up going to a, a, a children's home and then I think some of them got um, badly treated, you know, I think one of his sisters got raped in the children's home and stuff like that. Oh, so he had a really, really hard life, really, really hard life. And then I think he was very much of a, a freedom kind of person, so he used to just travel around with the festivals and, you know, real hippie kind of guy, travel around with the festivals and uh, just play his guitar. And, um, and then I don't think he could really hold down a, a job or anything like that. So he just sort of lived on the dole all his life, really, you know. And smoked right. a lot of smoked a lot of pot and ended up getting quite bad uh, cannabis psychosis from it. You know, it must have coated his synapses quite a bit after a while. And um, so yeah, so I think when I when I left him, there, that was there was that real sort of bitterness about me leaving him, and then the fact that I left with his baby, um, he was going to do everything and anything, you know, to stop that. And, uh, and I think he desperately sort of saw that sort of history repeating itself, that he lost his parents and now his son was going to lose him, do you know what I mean? So he really, really fought for him. Um, and then... I think by the time my son was going to just about start high school, that's where somehow he managed to get my son, and my son basically just left me and then went to live with him, you know, for a few short for a few short years before he passed away. So you know, in a way, he kind of won that back in that battle that he wanted. You know. Right. But I, I don't think that he had much of a, I mean, he didn't have a very good, um, what's what's the word I'm looking for, you know, mentors in his parents, because they were both alcoholic. I think his dad was very, very abusive, um, you know, and I think he repeatedly raped his mother, so probably half the children are all a byproduct of rape, you know. And wow. And um, what say they now? So he didn't. I don't think he had. You know, he didn't have any me mentor. So when it came to looking after my son, I don't think he could. He controlled my son very well because my son's very. He's very um. Defiant, you know, very defiant kind of child, very strong. So, you know, he would skip school and get uh, suspended from school and all that. So he didn't seem to have much control over him in the last days. Right. And then I don't know if my son's mother, I think I sometimes see son has been taking the pot and stuff like that. I'm probably happy about it. I was trying to protect him all his life from that. And, and now he's doing that himself. So, so that's Roy's story, really. You know, that is sad, very sad, and and not being able to lift himself out of that mire. You know, um, yeah, not really being able to better his life. He was a poor man. He was born poor. He died very poor, and he never really aspired. He couldn't. He couldn't. Couldn't get himself up the ladder. I don't mean to be some successful businessman and have millions or anything like that, but just to get himself out from such poverty and living such a, just existing really, you know. Right, right, yeah. So, so you, were, you were spot on there when you say he was trying to compensate, so I think that's what it was all about, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and surely, go ahead. I was saying that, you know, like some people when 
uh, they don't handle rejection very well. So when you're in a relationship with someone and then you want out, like they just can't accept that, you know. So he really just did make my life very miserable and took me to court for many years and harassed me and <laughs> all that kind of stuff, you know. So it was, it yeah. was really hard between us. It was a really hard kind of karmic thing between us. It was Oh, yeah, he's definitely part of your soul group, you know? Right, yeah, okay. Um, you know, trying to teach you something, or not trying to teach you something, but was here to teach you something, and as well, you were teaching him something. And, but, uh, you know, I think he's okay. 